There we go. There we go. Don't hit the power button this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> My hand is going it's slowly to... over to my mouse. I am slowly taking it out. It, it's to loosen you up. Keep you from getting nervous. <laughs> it's too late for that. You have done the opposite, my friend. <laughs> ah. Oh, it's so you don't get nervous. <laughs> Welcome to another session of Trolling the DM. That's every session of every D&D &D game that anybody's ever played. Ah, <laughs> oh boy. Well, I, I I get I get some fun in to troll you guys every now and again. And, you know, to be fair, last session, there were a couple, you know, close encounters, you know, with, the, with certain things, you know? I, 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 I got, I got, I got some licks in. <laughs> got some gores, goring... <laughs> Brutal goring. Yeah, I go. I gored a barbarian with a, with a moose. Like, what do you want? With a moose, which we killed. Which you did kill. Yes. The moose on the loose. <laughs> Not on the loose anymore. Yeah, the moose on the loose is a cooked goose. It's the moose. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Um. All right. I think. Okay. I double checking. We are all ready to go, right? Yes. I mean, we're live. Well, you know, just you know, just double checking. You never know. It could have been like, oh man, I gotta go to the bathroom real quick, and I might have missed it. All right, that's not important. All right. <laughs> Here we go. So, last we left our kobolds, they had just received a mission from a retired dwarven bounty hunter to find out the cause of a series of murders committed in Ten Towns. After she gave you some of her theories and way and uh, you weighed the proper ways to go about it, you decided to take a boat to Lonelywood, to avoid having to take a long trek to the blocked road to Targux. After arriving in the forest bordering village, the party asked around about anything that could lead them on the trail of this mystery killer. What they found instead were reports of a white moose that had been terrorizing the loggers' village, preventing anyone from gathering any wood from deep within the forest, gravely injuring any who would dare to venture too far in. After speaking with Nimsy Huddle, the halfling speaker of Lonelywood, the party accepted the task of dealing with this moose, who clearly would not be swayed like that of the creature of Bremen Lake. No converting for you, Nebo. Not this time. The party trekked through the forest for several hours, <laughs> only to find beasts that were not their quarry. And so, after many hours of trekking, they settled in for the night. Only they were, or they were awoken to the terrifying sounds of wailing as the figure of a spectral elven archer stalked to their camp with murderous intent. Though they hid from it successfully, the creature seemed able to sense the living and seemed to stalk towards their place of hiding. But before it could find them, Meepo, using her god-given powers of Eldath, turned the foul spirit away allowing the party to flee and finish their rest undisturbed. The next morning, after encounters with common beasts, the party eventually found what appeared to be the right trail, hooves of a moose far larger than any they had seen in the forest, with a smattering of bl blood as well. Their, <coughs> search... Bless you. their search led them to a curious sight, an elven ruin on a lightly wooded slope, bearing a moonlit moon, moon dial and a stone sarcophagus with an inscription. Seeking a way to open the sarcophagus, the party gathered the required materials, only to be missing one, that of a severed hand. While they pondered this and tried to explore the rest of the ruins looking for some sort of clue, the figure of the great white moose, fur matted with dried blood, strode out from the ruins and bellowed out a challenge of battle, which the party answered with in kind. A harrowing combat ensued. After a close call with Savage, who lost his eye from the beast's antlers, there was a brilliant turnaround with a well-placed strike from Hux, which cut off the awakened moose's leg, to which a bolt from Skanuck ended the fight. In the post-battle haze, there was a stroke of genius, question mark, in which the severed hoof of the moose was used to open the sarcophagus in place of a severed hand, to which it worked. And to which we start 
our session here. <laughs> so, still filled with the adrenaline from the battle which you had just uh, taken care of, and with the, as Hawks, you are placing the stump of the awakened moose in the brazier, that resonant hum uh, fills the air along with three others of those of the other ingredients you had placed previously. And as Savage is beating, is <laughs> furiously stabbing the corpse of the moose behind you, the sarcophagus lid, uh, the specifically the crack in between where the lid meets the uh, base, fills a bright, brilliant, silvery light. And you hear a slight shift and rumbling, uh, but there is no change that you can see. What do you do? Oh boy. This feels just like something my favorite adventurer would get into. Ox is going to try to see if he can't push the lid aside. Okay. As you push the lid aside, uh, as opposed to before where it would not open, the lid, uh, despite its size, effortless... Ugh, oh my god, I'm getting tongue-tied so often now, I apologize. Effortlessly... Uh, slides off to which you are met with, a, with an interesting sight you see what appears to be a heavily wrapped elven body you can see the uh, structure is specifically of the of the cloth used to wrap it uh, and embalm it seems to be it smells of embalming fluid and strangely heavily a pumpkin spice as well the uh wrappings are also kind of similarly when you're thinking of pumpkin spice uh it has a slight orange tint to it as well uh probably from either the spice itself or embalming fluid or age it's difficult to say um but there is a an elven body entombed in this sarcophagus and as soon as the lid slides off you hear a slight, ah, a, a, a seemingly a a, a, a a sigh of relief of some kind. And the body inside the, the, the sarcophagus starts to shift and move. And sits upward. Hey, uh, you, uh, you all right in there? The figure... Uh, which, by the way, the face is completely covered in these bandages as well. Uh, there is some slight... Uh, some of the bandaging is slightly askew on one of the... where the eye would be. And there is seemingly a dried... Set, forever, however how long old uh, eye. Uh, it's just milky white. Uh, this figure it does appear to be elven. You can still see... Uh, the remnants of like a, sh a dried, shriveled husk of an ear on one side that is slightly pointed, uh, kind of like stuck fast and stuck against the skull. Uh, the figure slowly turns to look at you, and you hear a slight cracking of skin, as into faking into a, a makings of a smile, and the figure goes, ah, ah. And gives a slight bow with uh, with one hand on its chest and a slight head nod towards you. Very slowly, it seems there isn't a whole lot of a range of motion with this creature, but it gives you a slight bow. Uh, but it does not respond to you in common. Uh, does it... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Languages... Yeah, I almost certainly can't talk to it. Uh. Alright, let's see your common draconic these mm -hmm. Let's see, I got common, I got the draconic. And I ain't got anything to do with the shit. I'm backing up. <laughs> yeah, you're having none of that. I'm going to return the bow either way. Indeed. The figure, um,. Kind of like kind of looks around kind of seemingly seemingly a bit not distraught but seemingly kind of just distracted by something 
uh, it, it gets one arm on one leg of the coffin, then one arm on the other side of the rim, and slowly pushes itself out, um, to which it can uh, get a better look at you. It stands approximately, like, uh, compared to you, pretty tall, but it's it's not, it's about, like, 5'9", so taller than you, but, like, not terribly tall in the, in the, in the, in the, in the scale of things. All right. Ah, where do we? And he kind of does that, that, that bow again, and, and one arm raises. Um, you assume it's giving you a greeting of some kind by its body language. Uh, sorry, I don't. Uh, I don't speak elf. But uh, nice to meet you either way. Ah, ah, ah. Hmm. It kind of gives like a very long, uh, drawn out, breathy uh, ahs and ums as it try as it seems to understand that you're having problems communicating with it as he with you. It kind of puts a a very dried husk of a finger to its chin and points to itself, Sanar, and then points, uh, um, points a finger to you. Uh, Pox, nice to meet you. Ah, bow again. Points to Yuskanuk. Black. Skanuk. Points to you, Savage. Savage. Ah, Savage. Ah, ah. And then points to you, Meepo. Meepo Momo. Meepo. The, uh, the head slowly nods. As you're all kind of like watching, uh, watching this figure, go ahead and roll an insight check on me. Does it notice the moose? We'll get to that. I am the most insightful person. Yes. <laughs> that would have been an advantage, but it would have been a thirteen either way. Right? Okay, most I of see. Well. Yeah, you are. You are. You've 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 been around ten towns. You know a thing or two about getting. You know about reading people. I have never been more focused than I am in this terrifying moment. It seems like there's a bit more than a language barrier here. You get the sense this creature probably just from being here, it probably isn't necessarily that intelligent. It seems to be able to understand your common in a way but like, you get the sense it's not terribly smart. So it's it's not so much that like it's, there's a language barrier. It seems to understand you okay. You get that sense, especially with the natural twenty. Um, but there may be something doing it, something with the fact that it its nature as an undead creature it, that you can clearly see that is the case. Uh, as it is a mummy, it's essentially a walking mummified corpse. Um, but that's what you get a read off of it. it. And that as well, it seems very with a natural twenty as well. It seems very calm, very very. In a way to describe it, it's almost like how, like, I don't want to sound, like, weird here, but, like, like how, like, a high person, would, like, someone, like, high would act, in a way, just very, very chill, just kind of, like, nodding along, maybe not completely understanding, but still in the spirit of things. Hmm. Like, it's at least intelligent enough to, like, to give you, like, give you its name. It may, um, but anything too complicated might not get through to it. What was its name again? Uh, Sonar, yeah. and I can actually type that out, out in chat. Is that a name that we might possibly recognize, that we might have heard from somewhere, or...? Um, I don't think you would have, actually. Let me double-check that, just to be sure. Uh, sorry, I um, no, it doesn't. It, I don't think you would have uh, ever heard of some of some name like this. So no, this is okay. strictly knowledge something you would not know. All right. And let me, um, actually, I did not put him... I can actually put him on the map now. He has a token. There he is. 
The horizontal. There we go. He is very much mummified. Yes, he is very mummified. Like you only see the barest traces of an of elven lineage in him, which is why I even recognize that in the first place. That one bandage that was kind of tucked off. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah, but he just kind of stands there, kind of with that weird, dried up smile, and just kind of nods towards you. Sunny win? And kind of like, kind of gestures towards the. Uh... You asked it before if you noticed the moose. He actually does notice it. He looked towards it, but he doesn't seem to react too much to it. He just kind of notices that it's there. Kind of looks at you. Kind of I'm nods. going to say something in Selvin, see if he responds to that. Okay. Kind of tilts its head. There's maybe like some slight familiarity you can see, but does not respond to it. Hmm. Okay. He just kind of steps out of the sarcophagus. Or that he had already stepped out, but like he kind of like, like walks behind you. Kind of just like pats you on the head, Hawks. And kind of like squats down. Very creakily. You just hear the cracking of bones as he does so. Just just waiting. Well, um without the uh the language without being able to really communicate with uh I mean he does seem to understand odd. you. He do, he seems to understand common, he doesn't seem to speak it though. Oh, I see, I see. That's what the insight I checks see. are for. Okay. Did not quite catch that. <laughs> sorry, so, so sorry uh, if I if I didn't make that clear enough, my bad. So Hawks is just gonna kinda nod and look back to the rest of the group and be like, Well, he seems friendly enough. Uh you've probably been in there for a long time, huh? Ah, ah. He kinda nods twice. Well uh we're looking for someone, but I, uh, I don't think you're the culprit. So, uh, pleasure to meet you. Ah, Sunny. And it kind of, like, gives a, gives another bow with its head. And a very, very respectful, uh, two hands in the chest this time. We don't have an extra uh, trench coat, do we? Um, it's gonna, like, turns to look at the moose. And, like... Would I be able to get a trench coat out of it? <laughs> well, you can Aesthetic. you can roll me a survival check to see if you can get the pelt first off. I think did wait, hold on. Did we did we roll this before? I I, I don't think we did. I mean, no, we did not. Eight. Um, with an eight, at most you get some scraps of the fur. You're at least able to get enough for maybe like. It would be like enough for like a, a small like like a mantle maybe, but like a full mantle. But as for like a full trench coat, unfortunately with that roll, no such luck. Unfortunately, gonna be a no on the trench coat. Um, I can make like a nice hat. <laughs> well, when I say you know what with with a mantle, I like the fur that you got, something. you could make like um like a, a sort of like hat that's like. Draping, like you could, like you could cover the face with the amount of fur that you had. I'm just thinking that if if he's gonna follow us around, then us being in disguise when we get back to town isn't really gonna help if we're being followed by a literal mummy. Ah. But wasn't there a a dog sled being pulled by a bunch of zombie kobolds? Is this any weirder? Well, aside from the uh, the arm falling off of that one, I don't know that anyone would have noticed they were zombies. This is a a little more obvious. Well, maybe we can uh, I don't know, like mug a bear and get some more for her. Fair Fair enough. Enough. I'm not a mugger. I don't mug people or bears. I guess but I cut their ankles. <laughs> We can go find that moose we killed the other day. 
Uh, yesterday. Okay. What's in the hole? Has, has anyone gone in the hole? No one has, no. You did know I'm that is where not. the moose came out of. We could send uh, the mummy in. Shit. Taka's gonna look into the hole. Alright, so hold on a second. Let me tell you what you see after I reveal some things. <laughs> my curiosity outweighs my caution once again. Yeah, one, 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 one little sec. Just one little sec. One Mississippi. Yeah, you did. Don't you do that with me. Don't you, you start, <laughs> mister. We've had first What's Mississippi. That? What about second Mississippi? That did you. Well, the first Mississippi is state. The second Mississippi is a river, which is a lot longer. <laughs> All right, so let me let me. Oh God, gee, ah, beans! I gotta I gotta move the move the camera. One second. Uh, all right, let's see here. There we go. All right, so what you see right here, this, the chamber that you see before you is very spacious, tucked under this hill. You can see as you look in, it's strewn with a lot of different bones. And as you, uh, <laughs> as you step in, Meepo and Skinuck, I need you all to make dexterity saving throws as a sudden flurry of fur, fur, tiny furred creatures, foxes, hares, goats, owls, wolf pups, and young bears just start swarming out of the barrow as they have been spooked by your presence. Do we still have the emboldenment bond? It's ten minutes. You, you since, would, you would still have moose. it. Go ahead and roll a, a d a d four. Let's go back. Twenty five total. Twenty five. Okay. With that, you are not knocked prone, and there is no flurry of bites as you manage to dodge out of the way. Skinuck, you managed to like, you managed to get to the side of the wall, uh, saving yourself from the torrent of uh, the torrent of fur and teeth and spittle that that just kind of like runs past you. you Got to take a moment to breathe, and as the dust settles and the dander, uh, you get a better look at the area around you. The Barrow itself, you notice that there are three statues, uh, which, by the way, I should actually, now that I've got the camera there, let me reveal to you what you can see as you move further in. I've gotten, let's see here. Oh, I got reveal. Daddy. There we go. You notice that there are three statues, three more statues, very similar to the ones outside. All of them seem to be in a reticent pose, uh, all facing towards the wall, uh, inward, uh, facing this way to the east. Um, let's see here. Yes. And you also notice that there are three passageways, uh, one going straight forward, one down this corridor, but you can see a small, a very faint, soft, pale, silvery glow. And then one area down here that also seems to have a silvery glow, but is blocked off what, by what appears to be a uh, stone door. With no noticeable handles or uh, way of entry that you can see. But the glow is coming from the a crack uh, right, right below it. In addition, you also see... Uh, there appears to be uh, another form of entry that you had not seen previously. Uh, it's hard; to, it was hard to see from the outside. But there is a sec there was a secondary way inside the barrow. Huh. So we got we got pitch dark corridor, we got silvery glowy corridor, and we've got door corridor. I'm all out of munitions. Um, let's go with darkness because I can see everything. 
I'll come right behind you just in case you need a little help. Give me a second. Hey, uh, maybe our uh, new friend knows a little something about this? He he actually goes in front of you, uh, Savage, very pol politely. He just kind of steps in, ah, Sunim, and just kind of walks past. So, uh, which which way would you go if you had the option? Kind of tilts his head to the side. Ah, ah, hmm. Thinks for a moment. Kind of scratches its head. It points, actually, it points outward, outside towards the, um... Towards the moon dial, and it points towards the this the door corridor, and it also points to the corridor that currently Meepo and Skinuck are currently walking towards. Which, by the way, as you're walking up there, I will reveal more to you. Okay, so basically, though, just not that way. Uh, What's that? Uh, it, sh it shakes its no. head. No, 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 not not that way. Uh, it kind of, it kind of like does like a motion where it's it does like eh, like both hands in the air, kind of tilting to the side, as if it's not like it's neither for or against it. But it seems to, it seems to point towards the moon dial specifically, and then points towards those two different places. Which you, Skinuck, as you both you and Meepo, I assume you're walking up that staircase now. Eh, yeah, fuck it, why not? Yes, yeah, so you walk out that way. You you see a very similar door, uh, blocking off your way. Very similar to the one that was in the previous hallway. There is, there is a faint glow um, under this one as well. However, um, it, you couldn't see it from your previous from the previous angle that you were on, which is why the corridor was in darkness. Does it have any symbols? Oh, that you can tell there are no visible symbols on this door. I, hmm. I suggest we check out the moon dial before we go into any of these doors. Ha ah, ah, ha, saloon. And it kind of like uh, points towards the moon dial. Saloon. Yeah, make a religion check. Ten. Ten, nine. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, so Savage. Uh, Savage, I think even with the seventeen. So, uh, you've been around here. Uh, you've been around here before. Uh, you've heard whispers of a goddess named Saloon who has to do with the moon. You gather that like, like he's using. The, kind of like the name of the goddess to signify the moon in this is, I, in this instance. I think Saloon is one of Eldath's friends. Which, as you kind of think about that, yes, there is some correlation between Saloon and Eldath. Hmm. So, can we dial this dial out here? It's pointing towards one of the moon faces. What's the moon face tonight? Can we tell? Yes, actually, you can tell. Let me uh, move uh, the camera. I'm going to zoom out so you get this time. I'll have the. There we go. Let's see here. So, currently, the phase of the moon that you're currently on right now is what appears to be. Which, funnily enough, is the one that the moose is currently on, actually. It is the half moon. Hey, maybe we can uh, turn the thingy. Ah, uh, the the uh, the figure kind of shakes its head. No, 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 no. Kind of points it towards Ooh. the sky and then points towards the uh, the symbol. Do we have to wait then? Ah, ah, kind of nods. That's like a month. Ah, it kind of like kind of gives a sigh in recognition of that fact, and kind of puts a crusty, uh, crinkled fist on its chin in contemplation. 
Can we trick it? What did you say, Meepo? Can we trick it? It thinks for a minute. Hmm. Ah. It kind of like puts a hand to its side in, in an a acknowledging gesture, which you think might signify, perhaps. Uh, are all the door are all the hallways closed in here, or is it just those two? What about this one down here? The one down there. As you go that way. <laughs> A switcheroony. You see what appears to be a softly glowing silvery mirror. Ooh, that looks valuable. <laughs> In indeed it does. This oval mirror is about, from what you can see, it's seven feet tall and about half as wide. It's encircled by a very decorative stone frame. It kind of, like I said, it glows with that silvery scintillating light, very similar to the moonlight. Hmm. Is it, uh, it's glowing, you said? Yes, it is. Maybe we could use a mirror to reflect the moonlight to the right place. Is it magical? I mean, it must be magical a little bit. Well, I don't, well, I don't know if you have the identifier spell. However, you can certainly make an arcana check. Anybody ah. got detect magic? I do, actually. If we got a few minutes, I can ritual cast that. I don't think we're in any hurry, particularly. We've got a month before the moon moves. All right, so how are you flavoring your detect magic? Hmm. Mm, all right, um, do you like do you like the way I'm asking you to to how you flavor these yes. with your artificery? Yes. Let's see. Okay, so Snuck is gonna like take his goggles off and start like tinkering and like you know he's gonna like pull a pair of um, a screwdriver out to like adjusting little dials on the goggles and muttering under his breath. You, no one can really tell if he's like incanting or swearing horribly. Um, it's very he's very being very quiet. And he puts them back on, then they're glowing green. Okay, as you finish your spell, you get the sense that there is some. Um, this is clearly magical, and it re it uh, the aura around it tells of it is clearly of divination style of magic. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to poke it. Okay. You poke the mirror. You touch in, you touch it, and nothing happens. I will say... What What does it do? Can you tell? Never mind. Uh, you you rolled pretty low on your arcana check, so you're probably... At the very most, with your divination sense, obviously, if it has divination, it's probably, like, either gathering, like, gathering information magically... In that sense, that's as much as you can tell with that kind of check that you got. I see. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the bravest of them all? And it better not be me. Right. The mirror's light does oh, not change. True. It's true. Magic mirror, can you talk to us? I think it's busted. You see, um, you see the, uh, the mummy kind of, like, walks up to you. It kind of, like, waves a hand. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. It, like, shakes its head vigorously. Uh, he watches it kind of, like, goes up to the mirror, kind of, like, squeezes past you. Uh, kind of, like, it puts a hand on the mirror and kind of, like, sits for a second. Kind of, it, like, tilts its head towards you every now and again to see if you're paying attention. And just waits... And then kind of puts its hand off and looks towards you. Ah, ah, a tune, a tune. Uh, he kind of, he kind of like it's, you can tell it's clearly trying to rack its presumably non-existent brain because of his mummified state. Uh, 
you get the sense that this is something you might have to attune to. It's like a magical item, which you are familiar with as an artifice. Right. It's gonna hurt. Well, so happening. That's a bork. I do want to note that Hox is going to take the effort to move the uh, moose off of the moon dot. Probably for the best, all right? It takes you a while. I, I won't have you roll a strength check for this. It just takes a little bit of time. Uh, just... I, figured, I figured Hox would be doing this while the others are checking out the mirror. Right, right, right. Absolutely. So you kind of drag it up on the ledge a little bit, kind of rest it up there. How far, how far do you want to drag it? I think, honestly, right where you put it is just fine. Oh, perfect. All right, so you, you managed to... At this point, the, um, the fairy fire would have ended... So let me uh, get that off of it. All right, there we go. All right, so you go ahead and do that during this time. What is Savage doing during this time? Savage is um, currently sitting on the uh, floor looking at this giant golden horn. Um, kind of nursing his eye socket. Um, yeah, which is still very sore. <laughs> Do I hear scraping from uh, coming inside um, the uh, inside this area? with them trying to move this mirror that I don't know about. Uh you heard um you heard talking of them. You had you heard them talking about a mirror. Like it's not too far away. You would at least hear them speaking about it. I will say hmm. I will say as you're kind of looking out there, uh go ahead and make a perception check for me since you're there. You're getting a, you're getting a good look at the moon dial since you you would you might notice this. A 15. Okay, that would be enough to notice this. You notice that the there's an inscription specifically about, underneath the symbol that Hox just uh, that Hox just moved the moose off of, which is why you couldn't see it previously. And you, as you look, go over there to look at it, it reads Unlock the Tomb of the Half Moon in Common. Didn't we already do that? It's unlocked. Tomb of the Half Moon. Uh. Maybe there's a yeah, another one in there somewhere. What about this door down here? All right, that door down there. Uh, as far as you can tell, it is sunken in a little bit it's clearly stuck behind some rubble you can do a strength you can do an athletic strength check if you want to move that if you wish seven it, it's doable it just takes a little bit more effort than you would like and it takes you a bit of time to do so uh, and as you're kind of like taking the time to go just like yeah well that's happening going back to skinuck and meepo i assume uh, with that, you would start attuning to the mirror, I suppose? Only one of us can do it. Alright. Naki Skinuk, would you have done that? What? Attempted to move the thing? Oh, you're attempting to move it? Okay. Let me double I, I just, I, I blanked for a moment there. My apologies. <laughs> it's alright, don't worry about it. Um... Are you attempting to move it or to attune to it? Um, can it move? Uh, do you attempt to try and pry it off the wall? Yes, you know, give it a little shake, see if it's ready, readily movable. Okie dokie. As you as you try and under, like, <laughs> as you try and pry off the mirror, there is a slight give. It does seem it is movable. However, it is it is made of stone, so it is quite heavy. Not gonna get crushed under, under it like a vending machine. Then never mind. Be it where it is. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, it. I mean, it's doable. It'll just. 
it'll t it's a multi-person effort, probably. And there's a chance, like, and initially when you're pulling it off, to make sure it doesn't fall down and crash and shatter. So, in that case, do you wish to attune to it, or do you, or do you want to call everyone over? Uh, let's, I guess, call everyone over. All right. So, in that case, Hawks and Savage, just as as you hear Skinuck cry out, you're like, Hur! and you push the you push the last part of the sunken in door in, and you, uh, you manage to. Uh, you manage to just barely uh, get in and scramble over the the uh, <laughs> the ruined door. Ox will just use the other entrance. <laughs> you just go. You just go in that way. All right. So at this point, the rest of you now notice the mirror as well as you wander in. Interesting. Indeed. This very fancy mirror, made of for the stone frame, that silvery, scintillating light emanating off of it. And Skanaki is attempting to try and move it. If you all attempt to do this, I would like each of you to make a strength athletics check. I mean, I'm not... I'm not exactly married to the idea. I don't know. Where to go? Alright. Before you could even protest, Hawks and and uh, Hawks and Savage already managed to pry the mirror off the wall. Oh my god, we <laughs> are so cool. a swobolds, man. Um the rest of you. Uh yeah, Savage, you easily you use your fingers to oh, pry oh. into the back. And pry the mirror off with a uh, with a slight cracking sound, as you can clearly see there was um, maybe some device that was hanging it up on the wall, but without damaging the mirror, you, you tug it off. And Hawks, you manage to, as Savage balances it off of his back, you with your hands kind of pull it onto yours, and all of you kind of do like a miniature conga line as you par start parading it off, and then as that's going on, Meepo. You just you just you just take the reins and just start pulling everyone up, pulling everyone, speeding up the process significantly as you do so. So you're able to move. So where would you like to move the mirror? We should try moving it out into the moonlight and see if we can reflect the moonlight into the right place for the moon dial. Yeah. All right. All right, just tell us where you want it. I just go ahead and go ahead and ping it on the map where you want me to put that. Right there. All right. I can actually, I actually put this as a token, so I actually can move the mirror. Right. All right. Get all the rest of you out there. As the mummified Sonar trundles slowly behind you. It gives a very satisfied nod. Ah. And a smile. So, now the mirror is out here. What do you all do with it? Currently, currently the uh, light moonlight is shading, again, as I said, on the half moon. Which I believe... I believe it's... Hold on, full moon... After the full full moon, it would be wait. It would be waning half moon. For a second, I almost forgot my my lunar my lunar my lunar stuff. Yeah, well, I don't know that Hawks necessarily knows which is which offhand, considering that uh, the moon at all is a figment of the waking dream to him. Ah, but course. um, the waking what? You know, 
when you're not in a cave, you're really in a dream. You never heard that before? I no. don't know how true that is. But anyway, that's the waning half moon over there. And we're trying to get it to the waning quarter moon. Or maybe three quarters moon. That would be that would be waning. It might be. Is that waning gibbous? I think that's waning gibbous. I... Oh god, I... I've completely forgotten. <laughs> Hang on, waning gibbous. <laughs> Quick, Google. So, so if if. If everything that's not in a cave is just a dream, how do you know you're not just dreaming about being in a cave? Hox is going to have to lean back and think about that. Oh, for it's a waxing crescent, not okay. Of course, sorry, that's in the waxing it's like crescent. It's really concerned. I know it's not noticeable. It's it's not noticeable from my very badly drawn moon. I apologize, but yes, it is a supposed to be a waxing uh, crescent. I'll uh. I'll have to uh, look over my notes later and see if there's a good answer there. All right, so what do you attempt to do? I don't know. I play, um, I'm putting this one on me, though. I think we're trying to make the moon shine through that little doohickey in the middle. All right, so in that case, if you would like to position the mirror, go ahead, let's see, I wonder, just go ahead and ping where you think the mirror would most likely be able to reflect the moonlight onto that spot. Right there. All right, All right so- Are we trying to get it here? trying to get the moonlight here right currently the moonlight is currently on that spot right on the spot that you pinged all right and we're trying to get it here you're trying to I get it i believe so we're trying to get it to go from here let me do this from here to here like this well, I'm so sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I misspoke. My apologies. It currently is on this one and it needs to get to this one Oh, so this thing rotates with the moon, then. Correct. And currently, Seems as you look like up in the it. sky, because of the darkness, even though it's not technically nighttime, in the light of the aurora, you do see the makings of the moon. Hmm. Hmm. Let's put the mirror here then. See if it works. Alright. Put the mirror there. Nothing seems to change. The light of the mirror... You, you notice that because there is... The light isn't strong enough that you can tell to be able to reflect the light... I keep... Sorry, I keep... I keep meaning to use the pointer, but instead I keep clicking the token. Uh, the light isn't strong enough to reach past the moon dial there, it seems. Maybe if we move it closer? Alright, you move it closer. Alright, as you move it closer, the light that is bearing down on the moon dial seems to intensify. And with that, there is a little bit of light that does seem to eke out onto this one. And as you do so, you hear a, almost like a wind blowing through. You hear this whooshing sound from deep within the ruins. I think we opened something. Right. Is, this, is this what you were talking about, Hawk? <laughs> 
You can see, uh, you can see Sonar, uh, very, with a very perplexed smile, kind of tilting its head, ah, as if it wasn't expecting that. Uh. <coughs> As Skanuck tries to take credit for it in the background. What do you mean, take credit? This was, uh, you know, it was my idea to move it. How does Hawks respond? I apologize, Mike. I think Hawks has been thinking about the cave problem this entire time and just been putting the, mo the mirror where Meepo's been saying to put it. <laughs> just I, don't think, like... I don't think... I'm not paid to think, I'm paid to do. Skinuck has, like, actually fucked them up a bit with that one, apparently, I guess. Like, what if we're actually in a cave right now, but we're dreaming about not being in a cave because we're asleep? But then that's a cave right there, and we just came... You know, I Is really... Is has a cave? I, I don't know. I'm going to have to write a letter to my mentor and ask about that because there's certain technicalities here that clearly I did not have worked out for me. If this does count as cave, then does like a house? Only if the roof is made of stone. You see you see Sinar put up a finger as if to say ah, huh? ah, huh? and then the finger kind of like scrunch, scrunches downward as if it lost what it was about to say. Let me tell you, giant rules are, can be a little bit confusing to follow. I can see that. That's quite the dilemma. Anyway, do we want to check out that door that we just happened to have opened? Alright, All right, go take a look. Something about adventure you were talking about earlier, Hawks? Oh yeah, yeah. This feels just like the sort of thing that some of the great adventurers I've heard about would be doing. I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of this. Let's go check it out. After you. All right. So which way do you go as you go in? Do you go downward or into that hallway? I think it. I think the downward one was the one that was more prominently blocked off and mysterious, right? I think he pointed to the one that goes up the stairs first. He pointed to the moon dial, then up there, then down the stairs. So now just kind of shrugs. Makes good ah. As if that All right, then up the stairs we go. All right. You go up the stairs. No, I'll lead the way. Okay. So, uh, what was with that swarm of critters that you, uh, stirred up when you first went in there? I think they may have been living in here with the moose. I don't know if maybe the druids left them in here. Why, why would a moose have a bunch of other little an littler animals with it? Well, the moose could talk, so... Yeah. Like, I don't know what a talking moose is thinking. Unless right. it's like, like, a kill it, so... Alright, so go ahead and move all your characters to that one spot. However, so go ahead and tell me whatever the marching order is for yourselves. So now we'll probably take the back. Chuck will be as far back as he can be. <laughs> Alright, so... so Meepo's so, in the middle. Meepo's in the middle, and then Savage will be behind Hawks. Alright, so you go ahead and go up to the doorway. Grid is a bit weird here, but it works enough. Technically, you could get into there. With your small, small sizes, you could technically get in there if you wanted to. Alright. As you walk to that door. Uh, the stone door to this tomb. Uh, I assume you do push the door in, Hawks? Yeah, I'll give it a shove. Okay. As you do so, you push it open and you see 
a circular room with another stone sarcophagus inside. In addition, you notice that this space seems lived in. You notice in the back that there appears to be the makings of a sleeping bag. And on the sarcophagus lid, you see the makings of uh, a rack of drying herbs and what appears to be a journal of some kind, a book on the lid as well. Someone's been here. Recently, you still smell, as you kind of sniff the air, you smell sp something in the air. Clearly someone was working here. And do you step inside? I think so. Okay. Let me... So here's a question for you. Yes. Obviously we don't see anyone here. Do I sense anything with my blind sight? Well... Not from that position. Uh, as you step into the room, though... Why don't you, since, since you're there, though, give me a perception check, just for the heck of it. Since I will say this will be aided by your blind sight. Fourteen ain't bad. Yeah, fourteen. That's not bad at all. Um. <laughs> okay. You see a tiny little shrub peek out from behind the sarcophagus, covered in these blue, these tiny little look like blueberries almost. And as soon as you notice that, a figure jumps up st jumps up onto the lid of the sarcophagus this woman is covered in head to toe with heavy furs her skin is almost as pale as the snow itself in her hands she wields two icicled sickles her mouth Ice is stained sickles. blue and she, what do you do as you see this person jump up onto the sarcophagus? Are uh, you alright, dear? She seems to almost disregard that. Well, Hawks will oh, raise ahead, his sorry. shield and keep his uh, axe, his hand near his axe, and he'll raise his, his shield just in case she uh, decides to, uh, you know, bop with the icicle, sickle, sickle, sickle. All right. Sickles. <laughs> the icicle sickles. That's, there's a tongue twister for you. Uh, she points them out towards you, Hawks, and screams out in common, Ten towns will be destroyed, if not by my hand, then by the Frost Maidens. That's a pretty bold proclamation. That's not very nice either. Can't we just get along? She kind of tilts her head at you. If you had any sense, you would flee. Meepo, give me an insight check with advantage. I did an insight check when she first jumped up on the table. Oh, you did? Oh, That was, most, that was mostly, though, just to see if she was going to attack. Uh, like, she definitely she's... seems very hostile. Right, um, she seems hostile, but she said stuff in, uh, inciting that, which is a different check, I think. Go ahead and give me a separate check, but with advantage. 14. As you're looking at this person and noting the kind of shrub, the, the sentient shrub that is clearly beside her, you get this sense that she might be a druid of some kind. And you get this sense as well, there is an air about her that as she jumped up and started screaming, the air seemed to get slightly colder. This person is... Is your name Ravison? Or do you know a Ravison? The individual seems to be a bit taken aback by that. That you... It seems there is some recognition in its eyes. 
How do you know my name? Well, uh, there was this lake monster we talked to, and then there was a moose, and we happened to hear it a couple of times here and there. You're sadly, stirring up a hell of a lot the of moose, The moose was real hostile to us, and we were defending ourselves, and it passed away. First off, first off, I don't want to take away from the role play here, but Michael, Michael, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> We've been trained to reach you about your car's extended warranty. I'm so sorry. How about your carriage's extended your warranty? Carriage's extended warranty. Sk sk uh, oh, I'd like to think that. Sk what would happen? <laughs> what would happen if thine carriage collided with another? Your warranty would not cover that, lest it expire. You, I you imagine it's going to with a message warranty. cantrip, if that's even on the artificer spell list, and just, like, messaging people that's on the street, like, hiding. Just, like, out of nowhere. Yeah, just out of nowhere. Uh, but there is, um, but to, go, to get back into it, <laughs> I apologize. Um, uh, as soon as you mention... Uh, a different creature, specifically the beast. She, there's a there's a roll to her eyes. There seems to be some recognition there. She knows what you're talking about. That beast and its scruples. I have so many more faithful companions that at least know what I desire and follow with the Frost Maiden's will, but that one. Too conscientious for its own good. I thought he was rather pleasant. Too pleasant. And speaking I don't see of beasts, a problem with being pleasant. and speaking of beasts, where is my guardian? Well, like I said, he was rather unpleasant to us, and we were defending ourselves, and things got a little bit physical. Her eyes narrow at you. And you have already done more damage than I would like to admit. You have set back my plans lately. But no matter. I'll simply create another one. I'll gather more to terrorize Lonelywood for what they did to my sister. I'm sorry to hear something bad happened to your sister. Is there any way we could help? She actually visibly, like, she visibly recoils from that. She, there, she, her eyes just light with fury. There is nothing you can do to help me. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Enough talk. Either you leave this place, or I will destroy all of you and freeze you to your marrow where you stand. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not the kind of talk of... Uh, that we respond positively to, okay? I say we take her. Yeah, I mean, she is kind of the source of a whole lot of the problems we've been solving. Do you now? <coughs> You've clearly faced my guardian. Surely you must be tired. Do you really think that you could take on someone of my might with the ability to awaken animals? In a fight? Do you believe that you can truly best me? Are you, are you truly... So... So... How to put it? Stupid. Can That's we... rude. Insight that? Sure. Like, I know awakening an animal is a very powerful ability, mm -hmm. but, like, does it seem like it's something she can do on the regular? Does it seem like it's within her like normal a pool of abilities or is it something that's that she's been... I'd say with that, roll an Arcana check as well. This is one I'm not going to do well on. Okay. Um, in terms of how she's responding to, to that, in terms of how she's acting, it seems like it's a minor setback, but it seems like something she can do. Probably on, 
if on the regular like you don't know if it requires any components or anything you're not sure but she's confident that she can create more to replace what she's lost is the impression that you get and even, I would say even with the low arcana check she's not bluffing when she says when she says that she's powerful interesting so well I respond? think we've taken enough of your time kind of tugging on uh, Savage just a little bit trying to get him to turn around Sorry to intrude. Yes. Run away and scamper to your little cobalt holes until they too will become frozen hole. over by Frost Maiden's will. Enjoy okay, what little time you have left. That's kind of racist, assuming we live in a hole. Oh, better hold me back. I'm about to go right into this. This is the kind of talk that I really, really. She sneers at you as you say that, Savage, as if taunting you. All right, Meepo grabs you. All right, I'm keeping my shield up, and if the rest of the group backs up, I'll back up, and you know, in front of them. But if the rest of the group is not moving back, I think. Uh... Wow, what a fitting natural one athletics there. At this point, Savage, even though that rage kind of burns within you, Meepo just kind of grabs you by the shoulder. And even though it's gentle, just kind of pulls you back and you barely the kind of nine. resist. The nine. Still better. Pray that we don't meet again, she says as she turns back to what she's doing. Oh, I'll pray to any god or demon you want. Bring it. You should pray to Eldath. She's already right. answered several of my prayers. As you, as you kind of scream that out, uh, she says, Worship a weak goddess? I think not. I'll worship one who I can truly believe in. Whose strength I can feel and see around me. Be gone. She just kind of waves her hand dismissively as you all leave. As Sinar just kind of waves... Ah, behind you. Slowly wanders back out, tiptoeing away. Okay, so we're taking the we're taking the mirror. Did we did we yet claim trophies from the moose to prove that we killed it? Uh you took some of its fur. Take an antler too, maybe. I mean yeah, that could work. I mean, do you want to take... You could at least... Do you wish to, like, do anything else for, like, more proof, or...? Yeah, because that's the big thing for me, is that if we take, like, a little bit of fur back, they're going to be like, oh, well, yeah, we need some, like, definitive proof here. If you think, like, if you want definitive proof, like, you could chop the head off. That would probably be significant enough proof. All right, I will, I will do that. Is the other tunnel open? Is the lower tunnel open at all? Uh, it is, yes. Uh, oh, wait, are you talking about the... Um... The one, yeah, bottom right. Oh, that one. Okay. Uh, as you actually go down there, that as you push that open, that one is also open. Savage, would you watch the tunnel that we just came out of just in case she comes after us? You want me to fight her? I will. If I'll go back up there and fight out, If she comes out, try to keep her from coming any further. Oh, yeah. She won't have any ankles to come in front of me. Right. <laughs> As you, um... <laughs> Sorry, that... I got a, I got a chuckle out of that. Um... So, there is, in fact, another sarcophagus. Uh, this one has what apparently seems to be an ornate carving of a... A very similar figure that you actually have seen before. It reminds you of that spectral elven archer that you had seen in the woods. It is a very sp spitting likeness. Spitting image, I should say. This game is just full of fucking assholes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I hate 
this place is awful. Yeah, well, they're not uh, very nice. Not very neighborly at all. Except for, of course, our friendly neighborhood mummy. Ah, Sonar waves. Uh, they weren't in the cave. That's true. You watch as Sonar actually goes behind you and walk, kind of walks up to the, um, walks up to the sarcophagus and puts a, a hand on it and kind of bows its head, and just gives a very forlorn, uh, kind of a sigh. Wants to open this and loot it, but part of me also thinks we'll get eaten. Is there a way to? Revive this one in a similar way as you that won't make it want to kill us like it was the other day. You seem to be lonely. Well, I was um, actually gonna I was actually gonna ask you if you had some like I don't know, last rites or something you could do to put it to peace. Hmm. So that kind of thinks. I don't have that Ready. So now kind of shakes its head, seemingly forlorn. I can kind of mimic it, but it'd be kind of clumsy. Hmm. Well, if there's anything we can do, we should try it. Because, uh... I don't think we want her out there wandering around doing ghosty stuff to just about anyone. Maybe if we find her again, we could lure her back here? I don't know. As, um, as you're all having this conversation, Savage, you, you see out of the corner of your eye that berry, that berry bush... Just kind of slow, like kind of slowly sneaking its way downstairs. Just kind of like peeking around the corner, looking at looking at you. Get chopped up too. It kind of like it kind of like peeks back behind the corner, as it as you notice it, and slowly <laughs> puts out again. Doing one. Um, you hear a, a, a very squeaky voice coming out, coming out of somewhere in the bush. I just want you guys to know, you probably, you probably made the right call. Right or not, her tone really put me. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that, but Revison's, Revison's very scary. You know, she's very strong. I once saw her summon... Eight wolves to tear a guy apart. Ooh, wolves. Yeah, it, yeah. it was very terrifying. That little guy, you strike me as the one that's not so easily bolstered. Well, I mean, I'm just kind of, I'm there as a food source. It kind of wriggles its branches. She enchanted me with a good berry spell so she wouldn't get hungry. So if I took you away, it'd be a thorn in her side. I mean, maybe. I mean... You want to come along? Um, make a persuasion check for me. Okay. Hang on. Hmm. It look you see its branches tilt back towards the uh towards the room. Tilt back to you, tilt back to the room. And you just you just you just hear these roots pitter patter against the stone as it runs over to you. <laughs> it jumps on you. Hide me I got you. Anyway, right. I think we best be going, because we should move that mirror soon. Hang on, I'm going to give you a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, make it so that you can control this. Uh, yeah, there we go. You should be able to control it now, uh, Caleb. I've got it. 
cool. All right, so you can move it along with you. Uh, for the rest of you who are who are the rest of you who are in the um, the chamber, what do you what do you, t you you continue with the conversation? What were we talking about again? I'm sorry. Right, we had our conversation on the chat to this to the side. It oh. was going on while you were having your conversation with the bush. Ah, very good. Let me just read that real quick. My bad. It's okay. And me probably suggested we leave now. Well, all right, but uh, we should keep this place in mind for the future, yeah? I agree. Yeah. Okay. So in that case... So what? Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm going to talk to, to Mummy Man. Okay, like, hey, yeah, so uh, what are your plans, buddy? You sticking around here? You uh, hmm. looking for somewhere else to go? Kind of forlo forlornly looks... Kind of around the temple. The face cracks into a frown. Uh, I follow, it says in broken common. Fair enough. Well, let's get this show on the road. Okay. You um, two new friends with in, you with the Uinto. Savage, what's that? This is that. Pretend Jared. I'm not. Pretend I'm not here. Just, just, just. All right. Let's go. Anyway, it'll be helpful for us and annoying for her. Excellent. Excellent. I like the way you think. All right. So you guys managed to sneak your way out of the temple. Uh, now, the mirror. It's going to be very difficult to carry that around with you. Let's at least move it away so it's not keeping those doors open. Okay, so in that case, where on this on this map would you like to move it? Are you going to try and hide it somewhere in the map, or...? Can you break it? That would be very easy let's, to do. Let's, um... bury it in, uh... We could put it in his coffin, yeah. Yeah. That way we know where it is. And no one else does. And right? nobody's gonna look in an empty coffin. And if they do, they'll just see a mirror at the bottom. We and can turn the mirror face in the ground so that they don't see the mirror just the back of it. That's true, too. Is there anything on the back? Uh, no. As far as you can tell, as you look behind there, there is nothing. <laughs> It's a nice meal. This is one of those times where I really wish I remembered what was printed on the back of the magic mirror in Shrek. Because <laughs> I know it has some sort of like advertisement on the back, and I can't remember what it was. I don't remember either. I think I know what you're talking about, though. Mm -hmm. Here, let me help you, Hawks. All right. All right. So, yes. So you move the mirror over. With enough time and effort, you manage to haul it over. And thankfully, because I said it was about half as wide as it was long, it very it it's a bit of a tight fit, but it does manage to just barely fit into the coffin. Alright, well. <clears throat> would you look at that? And you slide the lid on, and it's as if it was never open to begin with. It's like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Some extra pair service. Do we want anything else from that moose? Uh, more pain? Did we take the head already? Uh, Hawks, I believe, did did say that he chopped the head, I, I think. If right, I'm right, we can just take the head with us. I think, yes, Hawks would definitely do that. The biggest question is, how are we going to take it into town? Ah, Sonar kind of points at himself, too. Kind of looks down at himself. Ah, kind of snaps his fingers. As if, like, to say, darn. I only got rope. I've got rope. Probably. 
Well, um... I'm afraid I'm all out. Oh, I still have that uh, winter blanket. You do? So we could have him wrap himself in the blanket. And then I actually have 50 feet of hemp rope as well. So Pox has both required items. So we can wrap the mummy in the blanket and then tie the rope to the antlers. And drag that in. And we should probably also, like... Get back in our stack. Yeah. We should probably, like, mug a bear on the way back so we maybe have some extra blanket stuff for him. You're really uh, dead set on this mugging bear's plan. It's just fun, okay? What, what if we were to make a mug and make it shaped like a bear. How'd you feel about that? Less fun, but I like your creative spirit. Then you'd always be mugging bears. Uh, I, I suppose you would. Ha ha. Sonar just starts clapping. <laughs> Thank you. It took me five minutes to come up with that one. Alright, well, I think we've got everything we need and everything we've got together, so we might as well head back, right? Okay. Let me, let me gather, gather all this, all this, quote-unquote, up. Gather Skanuck. What? Savage and new balls. new shrub friend. Oh no, I made them long. Long, oh. long shrub. I right, just just copy these just so I have a reference for that. All right. So you begin moving back into the forest. Uh, double check. Sorry, I. I have to zoom in on the map here for the stream. There we go. So. It's a decent trek back. Let's see here. And roll. As you're going back, are you going to just go straight towards the town, or are you going to... <laughs> As you put it, mug a bear. Well, we've got to figure out a way to travel with the mummy without getting caught. Yes, because as so much as like the winter blanket uh, carrot putting over him, well, it can only do so much. People will be will look at this man with this person with a blanket over them and like, huh, that's weird. Yeah, let's, um... It's skin well, condition. Don't be rude. Well, here's the thing. If we go back to town and we have like, outside the town, we could go pick up some winter clothing and then head back out to him. Because the winter clothing we have is pretty substantial for covering us, right? Indeed, yes. In fact, most winter clothing in the Dale... You can barely tell who someone is if they're fully uh, geared up. You can only really see like, like the uh, like where the eyes are because the face is covered up too. Uh, so yeah, it's if you get like the full winter gear, it's it's pretty it's pretty convincing to hide someone that way. Right. I suggest we do that, and then we also keep the rheumatism excuse for the mum. Everybody's got rheumatism. It is quite cold. Sure. Sonar nods. Ah. All right, so... That seems like a uh, pretty good plan to me, then. Okay. Then I'm the right hand. All right, Nepo is the right hand. I shall be the left hand of Zach. That makes me look better. The right hand fellowship. 
probably a good idea that you're the head again, since you you were the one that spoke to Miss Nimsy Huddle, the speaker, before. Yeah. That would be awkward, just comment with a different voice. Wait a second. I, I, it, something's different about you. Uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> yeah, you all speak at once. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Oh, it's not. Alright, I have a cold. <laughs> yes, a neck of cold. <laughs> Um, it's a magical illness called Eklund Cold. Caught it in the canyon. <laughs> Caught it in the canyon. Oh boy. Okay, so it takes you a few, a couple hours to get back. So around this time, you assume it's around possibly, hmm, quote unquote midday, uh, as it were. As best as you can guess, well, with the uh, the dim light. Um, but you do eventually manage to get back to the village, dragging your prize behind you. Now, I assume this is the point where you wouldn't want to go into town separately to buy these these winter clothing, clothing, right? Indeed. Do I... we have any money for this? Well, we were going to get some for. Killing the moose, right? Getting rid of the moose. Uh, yeah. So let's start there. All right. I believe. Hmm. I believe Miss Nimsy said that the there would be a price for the uh, if you sold the uh, the pelt itself, that would knit you something. But considering uh, how that was butchered, probably wouldn't get you as much as you would have hoped. Ever, there definitely would be a reward possibly for the slaying of the beast. So where do you where do you go first? Do you go to sell the hide or do you go to the speaker's house first? What I'm you? I'm the legs, I get to decide. <laughs> you just start walking in direction. Yes, I will actually start walking towards the speaker's house. Right. Unless otherwise directed. <laughs> okay. Uh, do my job is the legs. <laughs> you gotta I'm your such head. a great pair of legs. This was the best legs. Alrighty. So. The best of legs. It was the worst of legs. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Alright, so. You spend a few minutes walking to the speaker's house. Walking past. Uh, a very worn down uh, building, which you can see there's a uh, broken sign reading the ramshackle as you kind of walk by. The door is kind of just kind of hanging open. It seems like there are people just using this as like a wood storage. You just kind of walk by that as you're um, heading to the speaker. And you actually see the speaker walk out of the house in question, or rather the, uh, the building in question. She kind of like just kind of claps her hands as she clearly had Clearly, she's had uh, had exerted some force, probably carrying wood to this uh, building. Like, oh, you've returned. Welcome back. Oh, and oh, he kind of looks behind you. Apparently, uh, to a job well done. Yeah, uh, not without its um its consequences. As I rub my eye. Suck it. Oh, cons oh, get oh my goodness, are you all right? Oh, I, I can get a nice good treatment to take care of that if you want. It, it'll just help staunch the bleed and the, the, so it won't get infected. Uh, I, I, it's okay. I've already, I've already taken care of it enough to where it's it's in no real danger of infection. Uh, hmm, she kind of squints at you. You one of them two tough types for help to ask no. for help? Oh, no, 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 no. No. Mm. She just, she just kind of squints. All right. No. If we could throw in more of those cookies with the payment, that, that'd that be great. I, you know, I never did actually mention how much you would get for, uh, uh, hmm. She kind of like, kind of like thinks to herself, oh dear. Just ballpark me a sum. 
if you uh, what you're looking for? What sounds fair? We need at least five gold for the uh, winter clothing, so we should probably ask for at least a little bit more than. It's, uh... Uh, how does twenty gold sound? Ooh, she kind of like puts a hand on her chest and gives a sigh of relief. Oh, thank goodness. Sure, I, I can go ahead and muster that. That should be no problem at all to, to scrunch up that amount. Uh, and of course, I'll throw in those cookies for you. She kind of gives you a wink and a smile. Well, she wasn't expecting us to be able to do it. Well, uh, do, do we follow you or uh, do I wait here? Um, yes, you, no, 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 follow, follow me. Uh, get, get, get yourself out of this, this right cold. It's really fidget today, more so than yesterday. Right in here, go, she kind of just kind of wanders off with you in tow. <laughs> I assume you, you, you kind of hear, uh, Savage, because the, the awakened bush is uh, on your person. <laughs> it's kind of like a, I, I, <laughs> I should, probably should have mentioned this before. So, Savage, you're holding on to the bush. The bush is holding... It's using its roots to kind of, like, weave its way around, like, the straps and, like, posts. It's, like, right in... There's, like, a, a noticeable lump in front of the, uh, both, uh, Skinuck and Meepo. You both are kind of trying to pull it back so it doesn't... It's not as noticeable. And it just kind of whispers to itself, I'm very cramped in here. Is this how you guys walk? This is this is awful. Shh, quiet down there. It it's a it's a disguise. We... Did you say something, dear? No, no. I'm I'm uh making plans. Yeah. I see. Travel plans. I see. Huh, she kind of squints again. You're an odd sort. She kind of she kind of shakes her head to her uh, to herself and like goes back and goes into her house, as you follow inside. Oh, okay, okay. I mean that sh that shouldn't be a problem. But you you walk inside and and as as you walk inside, you have to dodge out of the way, uh, ha uh hawks, as uh four four of uh. Nimsy's children just kind of scamper uh, in front of you, each kind of like waving like a wooden sword like at each other, basically play fighting. <laughs> and they each kind of like run from room to room, like, children, children, come on, go to your rooms. Like, I have business to discuss. It's like, oh, but mama. I was like, no, no buts. To your rooms. Okay, okay, okay. As they all march up to their rooms. Uh, that kind of gives a, a huff and a nod. And she kind of like rummages around. Ah, I swear I must have put... Ah, come on, come on. Ah, I must have had an extra... Bit. Oh, oh, thank the stars. Ah, ah. Yeah, she kind of like brings out a a very uh, patchworked uh, bag uh, with coin in front of you. And uh, she gets to work making some of those cookies. She, as, which leaves you time to grab it while she is not looking. So, you got a bag of 20 gold. Spread that amongst yourselves how you wish. After the subtraction of winter gear. And you wait a few minutes time as she bakes the cookies. Kind of gives them to you. This time they're halfling uh, shaped, with like little, with like little happy smiles, uh, with little, little icing, well, like red icing clothes, with uh, green, with green uh, trimmings. Uh, it's also added into your inventory. Let me see here. How much do I want to give you? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna roll that again. She wouldn't just give you one cookie. She gives you four plus those two. So it's six, six cookies. Got it. I 
and now we are able to get clothing for our mummy friend. Indeed. She gives you a hearty thanks. Uh, she is. She's gonna. She's going to go in for a hug. Do you deny the hug or do you accept the hug? Because if you accept the hug, there's a chance she might discover the lump, <laughs> or several lumps. Deny it. Deny it. Abort. 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 Oh, not a hugging type, are you? Oh, it's fair enough, fair enough. She kind of like, kind of, kind of, just a bit of a sour look at that, but she nods, like she's under, she understands your know, personal space and all that. But with we're that, more the, we're more the moose murdering type. <laughs> yeah, exactly, more the moose murdering type. Um, so you go outside, and at this point, as you go and buy your winter gear, which is easy enough in this town, and you go back to your friend. You guys level up to level three on the completion of this quest. Hallelujah. Um, 50, uh, 20 minus 5 is 15. And 15 divided by 4 is not quite 4. Who's getting well, the, the winter gear is 10 gold. Uh, oh, it's 10, not 5. It's that was, that's right. It's so, on the... Uh, the snowshoes that were five, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So it's two gold and five silver if we can get change for that. You can you can get change for that easily, yeah. Cool. Passing gold down inside the uh, trench coat. <laughs> yeah, serious exchange uh, like between between the layers. Like, oh, you get this much, you get this much, and I can just kind of like trade between. Wow, this is occurring underneath the trench coat. All right. <laughs> a whole, it's it's its own personal economic system. So yeah, you what get to roll the... your hit dice, roll, get, add all your new fun stuff for a lot of you. What is the average of of d eight? Three oh, and a half. Um, I think that's a. The average of a d eight is a five. Five, yeah. You just take the half and then round up one. Five, so I get seven extra hit point maximum. Yay! Yeah. Oh, Meepo. Yeah. What's your con, Meepo? Oh boy, I get a whole lot of stuff. What is, what is Meepo's con? Oh, I was muted. Meepo's con is two. Okay. It's not terrible. Yeah. Not terrible. It's four, it's not bad. Early, early on. Um, I think that I'm going to just take the average because I can't roll really dice. It's slash r, not r slash. I know. I did. I did slash. I did slash r three times. It didn't work. Okay, so it was good that I took the average before rolling. Oh, so you were just testing it to see what if. Yeah. What if? What? <laughs> what if? <laughs> There's a reason we do not roll for these things. Oh, that's um. Mm. That's only four. That's not too bad. That's pretty tasty. Barbarians, man. Yep. Tasty, yeah, tasty. Cox is up to twenty-eight. And second level. Oh man, the list of things that Hawks just gets. Right yeah, now. you get a lot of stuff. There's a I lot of. Oh god, I have my specialist oh, spells. I have my subclass. I yeah. have no idea what to take. Yeah, you get your specialist, <laughs> oh, bro. Right in the middle of the stream, bro. What? <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Okay, don't don't even, like, have, no pressure. How, we can take some time. How many viewers do we have? Do we have any viewers? <laughs> have no, the viewers? We, we have those of us who. Just you guys, just you guys. So there's no one. It's fine. No one, no one's, no one's watching right now. You got time. Okay. I reflexively turn to the warlock page in uh, Tasha's. Okay. <laughs> Not even. Square. You ain't a warlock this time, buddy. Yeah, you know. Not yet. Hmm. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna multi-class. I know that. Okay. Um, can explain to people watching how much you love the warlock class. I need to look up how much smith's tools cost as well. I think they might be like twenty-five gold. I I, I think. I uh, I know I have a pair actually. Check. 
Um, I, just first I can level. produce. I can produce a temporary set of sniff tools if you want them. Ah, that's right. You can do that. As of right. Now. I mean, I don't need them right now, but I do get proficiency with smith's tools as uh, a rune knight. Ah, cool. And I learned giant. I now can oh, only speak giant. So you've just been you've been screaming chop, and you've screamed it so many times you've leveled up your speech one hundred. Well, <laughs> as part of the uh, hermit background, I believe I do have a scroll case full of notes. And so I'm assuming that in his downtime, Cox has been trying to figure out some of the writings of his uh, his mentor. Indeed. Oh, I think I I get some spells from my list of from your deity. Spells. Yeah. Let's see what those are. Um. In the peace domain. Let's see, tools. Smith's mm, tools are 20 yeah, gold. Aid and warding bond. Mm. I gain aid and warding bond. Both good spells. I know more about aid than I do about warding bond, though. Oh boy, and yeah, now I can turn big. Yeah. Shenanigans are ahoy. If we really need to, we can just send you into town. Well, or... I mean, I won't be, I won't be medium. I'll be large. So right, but large is something. Mm. I guess maybe not. I don't. I don't think. We can, first, first we off, can make a pair of fake wings, and you can pretend to be a bipedal dragon. Right. I don't. Hmm. I'm gonna say right off the bat, off the bat. I don't know if people would buy that. I don't think they would. I think that might be worse to do. Like a dragon stomping into town is like it'll be great. The kobold, they just look at us with disdain. Dragonborn, they'd be like, "Wow, that's a big dragonborn." Kobolds on the other kobolds on the other hand, ones who aren't as gifted as you. Hmm. Well, my phone sound. I should have said that. Warding bomb. Wards a willing creature I touch with mystic connection between me and the target until the spell ends. While the target's within 60 feet of me, it gains plus one bonus AC and saving throws and has resistance to all damage. Also, each time it takes damage, I take the same amount of damage. I. The spell ends if I drop to zero, or if me and the target become separated by more than 60 feet. Also, ends if the spell is cast on another. I love that this sets you to large instead of actually increasing you to size. It's pretty great. It is pretty good. It stacks whoop, within whoop, large. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then I need my runes. Yeah, you get you get so much at level three. You get so much cool stuff. So I'm curious, Michael, what are you thinking for Skanuck's uh, subclass? I have no earthly idea. Um, all of them seem fun. Yeah, all of if them you, seem a lot of If you want to just like, do you want to just like put it off till like later, like after the stream's over? If you can't think of one right now. Or... Um, give me a couple more minutes, and I will try to decide. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, we got we got plenty of time. Just, just kind of. I consider this like a mini break in a way, just like kind of we're kind of like putting all this stuff together. When do barbarians get their subclasses? Should be at this three. level. Yeah, it's level three. There's there's no subclass. There's no race, or there's no class that gets a subclass. After level three, I didn't it's know all, if it were not, it were not though. Yeah. What what are you going with? You'll see. Oh, <laughs> oh. 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 
We already know what he is, what his background or what his subclass is. Don't we? Was, was well, he, he, had, he had an the... idea, but you don't know if he's going to go with that. Maybe he'll, he'll surprise uh, you. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll surprise me. I don't know. Maybe. I have to pick, I have to pick a pair of runes. I've already chosen the second level spell I want to add if I can do that. I'm double checking the rules on spell casting. As the, as the crows... <laughs> As the crows lurch in the background, I'm going to turn that off since... I'm going to turn that off. Something calming. So I have to pick two runes. And... Proficiency is bonus that you need for... Proficiency. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I can't believe. I, I now you now, now do you see why I was excited? Uh, why, why I was excited for you to see what was inside the sarcophagus? <laughs> you just have a mummy friend now. Mummy friend. He's a good friend. Okay. So are we gonna have to uh, maybe rent another boat to get him back to? Uh... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, so we could ask the, the plesiosaur to have him ride on his back. Oh wait, then we have to then we have to take the boat back somehow. Is this gonna end up like a you know one of those word one of them word puzzles where it's <laughs> see if she can buy a boat. And the I mean, we have a boat. If we buy a boat here, we wouldn't have to rent a boat next time. Right. We just don't have anybody who's proficient in boats. So we just have to make guess stuff. Yeah, buying a boat. I think let me. I need to double check how much that actually costs. I believe it's fifty gold to buy a boat, and then two gold. For yeah, we can't buy a boat. I need to double check that, but do I want pets? Also, the awake. You have an awakened shrub buddy now too. <laughs> right. Shrub buddy. We stole an awakened shrub buddy. Okay, I think it's pretty obvious that I should take the stone giant rune just because Hawks's mentor is a stone giant. Makes Whether sense. or not it's the most efficient thing, it's like. Where is it? We're four cobalt in a trench coat. Efficiency is out the window. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I just have a. Okay. So I could have a cannon, or I could have a robotic puppy. You should uh, ask Nikki about doing the cannon, the uh, artillerist, because that's what, uh, in another game that we're playing, she's a tortle artillerist. I will. I'll shoot her a quick message. Or she may have as well. Yeah, or you could be Iron Man kobold <laughs> with your yeah. suit of armor. But oh. I think... Doesn't... I don't remember which... Did Tasha's add any? Yeah, she added the armor artificer subclass. Uh, That's what I was referring to. I... Oh, I felt like that was like part of it already. No, oh, no, that was in way the... after artificer came out. That's right. The um the one one of the other ones they had was the um what you gonna call it the archivist that switched to this wizard. Right, yes, that's switched to Scribe's Wizard, I think? Right, Scribe Wizard, which is great. Yes, the Generalist Wizard. I think I'm going to go with Artillerist. Artillerist, okay. Beast Uncertain, thing. but I like the idea of just having a fucking gun. <laughs> I cast gun! <laughs> Bang! He, he does yeah, seem good. like a gun kind of person. I gotta say, okay, so, okay, in that case, if you're going artillerist, what should your 
turrets look like, because I'm just... I, I have to actually get a token for them. I'm just now realizing. Or you can just... You oh, can sometimes wow. you can just have them on your shoulder sometimes, if you wish. Yeah, you can just, like... You can either, like, plant them on the ground or just pick them... Or, like, be carrying them like a gun, apparently. Mm -hmm. Or have so, them on your shoulder, like a shoulder turret. I just realized I can add another spell that I... Missed at second level, I think. Huh. Like, better picture of this thing. I only leveled up, I didn't add that extra spell. Like, gain a yeah. spell. The armor is actually pretty. pretty cool. It makes me want to yell Space Marines at the top of my lungs, but. I'm not going to do that on stream. <laughs> some other point. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call you on Discord at some point and uh, <laughs> yell Battle Brothers like, Ice Marine. It'll be like no context. Like it'll be like two weeks later, like in the middle of like in the middle of the night. I'll, I'll just be on Discord and then suddenly I just get a call. Oh what? Hey, oh hey, Mike, what's going on? Space Marine, and then just like just like in my ear, full blast. Battle Brothers. Hmm. Space Marine. Or maybe I'll go into the uh, whole metal boxes thing, but <laughs> uh, I digress. I digress heavily. You know. Right. Just let me let me all oh, know I... when you're ready, or if you need some more time. Torn. Torn. On the one hand, I really I really picture Snook as almost exclusively ranged, but at the same time, the idea of like the armor, like super heavy armored cobalt, is funny. Well, I know one of the armor options has a ranged option, I believe. Yeah, the Infiltrator, I think, has, like, zappy powers, right? Yeah. The Infiltrator armor. Of course, that wouldn't be your crossbow, that would be something else, but yeah. Yeah. If you, if you do see Skanuck as the kind of kobold who likes to wave around a gun, then Artillerist would probably be the best fit. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely the sort of like have a ranged weapon. Mm. At all times, can be like two handed ranged weapon. That's that's Knuck's aesthetic. Okay, I think I'm taking the cloud room as my second room. Cloud room. Alright. Not really for its main ability, although the deception checks might be useful in terms of ah, yes, maintaining, maintaining the illusion. Maintaining the trench coat. But uh, the big thing is that it's um, invoking the rune, lets you redirect an attack, and so it gives Hawk some options for protecting his uh, more fragile buddies. So I think that's a good option with this. And right now, the fire and frost don't seem thematic enough to make it worthwhile. It's kind of up in the air once I have the stone room, what was actually, you know, the next thematic thing. Right, right, for sure. And do I have the opportunity to put these on stuff right now, or will that have to wait? Uh, putting them on what? The runes, you don't just have them under effect. You have to take a rest. Oh, yes, and that, uh, if you do, then, uh, yes, you would have to take that rest. Finish a long rest, touch a number of objects. Yeah, so they are not on anything yet, which is unfortunate, but kind of how it is. It's just how it be. Do I get the spell slots immediately when I level up? Yes, you do. Okay, so you actually, there is actually, there is actually a, a name for the rune, for the cloud rune. It's, it's S-K-Y-E is sky, and it's, okay, actually, you know what, I have, I actually have an image of the, um, of what all the different runes are. Just, just a second. I, I know in my initial drawing of Hox, the one I sent you that had the shield and the yeah. rune on the shield, I think that rune was not stone, but mountain, mm. but... It was in the same vein of, you know, a rune associated with stone giant stuff. 
either way. Yeah, one second. I just don't. I am ready, by the way. You're ready? I just need to, uh... I will, I will send you a picture of the runes, though. I'll put it in general. The general chat, which we share on Discord. Yeah, just the giant runes, just in case you want to... If you ever wanted to draw the rune, uh, that's what they... Because there's sky, and there's... Yeah, shark. you you remember that, that the, the fiel, that one was the one that I had drawn on the shield. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Vind. Like Z with a dot. And the three that's sideways sitting on top of it, kind of. Yes. So that's probably the rune that he's he would be drawing. Oh, shield. Maybe. Stein is the stone one. Yeah, Stein. Good stuff. All right. All right. So Stevens, good to go. Who else is good to go? Give me one more second. I will be right back. I'm good. Okay. Thanks. All right. So Mike will be right back. And then Actually, while we are on a break, let me refill my water and check the dogs. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> a break upon the break, of course. So this Ravison is certainly an interesting fellow, isn't she? The jerk. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, ah. yeah, right, jerk. Just, just, just all around no good. Shame. Scuff loading, loading a primitive shotgun. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> I'm building this specifically so I can shoot you with it. Like just that, it's that Skinuck would be the per would be the kobold to like have just the right amount of spike to build a very specific contraption just to fuck over one specific person. Yep. He do it. He do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Honestly, at that point, you could pull up the uh, what these the, the part that you're sending. You could probably pull up the art of the oaken bolter. Oaken. Oh, oh bolter. yes, that's that monster from Mordenkainen's, right? I don't think it's from... Is it from Mordenkainen's, or is it from... I thought it was among the constructs in the main uh, monster manual. Uh, it might? Oh, no, it is in Mordenkainen's. It is. Okay, I, I was about to say... It, it definitely was not in the main monster manual, but then you had me get second-guessing if it was in Volos rather than Morden's, but no, it is in Mordenkainen's. I... Honestly, that first image you shared, uh, Michael, it was probably looking at it was probably sketched based on the concept of a high tech oaken bolter. Yeah. <laughs> looking at it. But anywho, I am also back right now. Well, that does look like a like a high cut like a high tech oaken bolter. That really does look like it. That first. One. I like. I like the like the wheeled one more, except that it's a crossbow. It's kind of like oh. Well, I mean, you can make a you can have a mini version of it and like flavor it like that's what it looks like. That's true. That's true. I was thinking in terms of like you know, force damage and like weird energy shields. Right, right, right. 
I like how I look up Boulder and I've got enough like 40k and <laughs> Warhammer and my uh, search history and stuff that I've got half of them are pictures of the thing from D&D &D, and the other half are Space Marine guns. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's living the life of the, the tabletop hobbyist, right? Indeed. Such is the way. Alright, so Mike's back. Stephen, are you back? Take that as a no. Always have certain spells prepared. That's good. Always have shield prepared. That's fun. And you thought Bruce was bad. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I shall become invincible. <laughs> but just bad kobold cackling. <laughs> kobolds do... Couple artificers do get heavy armor. Um, eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should be the tankiest little vermin <laughs> in all the world. I was gonna say I'm a little bummed that I would have to take the long rest to actually get the other things, but I'm realizing that with like the whole giant size thing, like I'm already getting enough right off the bat to have some fun. So yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not too burned up about it. Thinking about it that way. Like, yeah, yeah, still gonna get to go big and smash stuff. Yeah. Smashily. Do you know how to do a suplex? Uh, would you be willing to suplex that asshole through it, lady? That'd be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about a suplex, but uh What about another what about if there's another moose? You can do a uh whatchamacallit. Um Oh, what's the thing that um a lariat? That's what I was thinking of. Lariat! Uh oh! Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. If I'm going to do any wrestling moves, I'm either going to be, you know, obviously you've got, you know, American wrestling and wrestling everywhere else, you know. Um, for American, it would be a face, but everywhere else, the brawlers are the heels, and you know I'm going to play a heel. If I'm gonna be doing wrestling moves, oh, so dear. yeah, so lariat, absolutely. Oh my goodness! I mean, here's the thing, though: would you be too big to properly lariat someone? Like you just like like lariat over them? Well, it's fine. It's a small giant for you to fight. I mean, that's true. I could go looking for <laughs> giants to fall. <laughs> oh no! Uh, Oh boy. Uh, Steven, are you back yet? I am. Ah, okay. Uh, Caleb, are you here? Harriet of Doom. I am here. Perfect. All right, so then, everyone is back. Are you ready to continue? Ready. Yes. All right, let's get to it. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. All righty. So. As you all wander back to your newfound friend in Sinar, I'll say the time you take to disguise him up would be enough for a short rest if you wanted to take one. Do I get anything on a short rest? Oh, I get my second wind back. I definitely want to do that. Yeah, roll them hit dice if you have any missing hit points, if you wish to use them. I think Savage might have been the only one with missing hit points. Yeah, he, he took a big hit. 
big oof. Still take, keep taking them. Did you ever make a decision on um, whether you wanted the prosthetic or not? Nah, I don't. I don't need that. Fair. It'll um, give me. I I do want to say, even though it was rather violent, I am kind of glad that that moose is no longer among us. For personal hey. reasons. Yeah, hey, there we go. I knew we broke him actually. All right, so you both spoke at the same time. Who, who said what, uh, starting with uh, Michael? Or, or Skaduck? I knew we'd corrupt you eventually. And then it, what did uh, Hawks say? I was just saying it It was just for personal reasons. Oh, okay. I guess I have a cat now. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right outdoors. Okay. Well, um, yes, Hawks said... Uh... <laughs> Uh, now, now I'm having trouble saying it. Hawk said, uh-huh. "Yeah, he was pretty sus." Because get off the stream, <laughs> get out of here, out. Is that a... the audacity? Is that a... Was that a taboo thing to say? No, Should I not have said that. No, <laughs> taboo it... to somebody else's. That's another game. Are you going to? Are you going to eject me? Stop. <laughs> Stop. Cease. Cease as the DM. Cease. Uh, for those who might listen to this later, he's using it, the voice and the mannerisms of another character in a game that we're playing. Yeah. A, 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 a game in the good old setting of Plain Gia. Which is very interesting. I like it a lot. Yes. Un- Ungabunga D&D. Ungabunga D&D. And yet you're to... treating me so coldly. <laughs> Kobolds in a trench coat with <laughs> the small bald. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, everyone. All right, focus, focus, focus. <laughs> we gotta, gotta get back into it. Okay. Not that I did enjoy it, but we gotta focus. No, um, he, he he said among us, and I just I lost my mind. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> That's right. I, I, for what it's worth, I enjoyed it, but what was Hawks really going to say that wasn't that? Oh no, that was that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Meepo, what were you going to say after that then? I was just saying it was just something something personal. Sure. Wait. No, really, it was. And because we're in like we're in the cramped coats, the snuck actually says wink instead of winking. Wink. <laughs> I mean, at this point in time, you would be slightly in the woods where you left Sonar, so you would you would have some a little bit of space to get out and about if you so wished. You're still kind of close to the village, but just far enough where you're out of eyesight. It's a lot warmer in the coat. It is a lot warmer in the coat. With all you together. Well, are kobolds cold blooded? Because they're related to dragons? No, I will say. Huh. I am making that ruling now. That might be not as part of the Forgotten Realms lore, but that is what I am saying now. They're not cold-blooded. They're like dinosaurs in a way where they're slightly warm-blooded. Me. Like birds. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, like, like boids. Like boids. Just like birds. Just like birds. Well, uh, 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 uh. anyway, you know, I think I learned something from this trip so far. Ah, uh, Sonar kind of looks at you, with an inquisitive look. You know, just the the deeper meaning of things out here in the cold. Yeah. Ha. <laughs> huh. Sonar kind of like nods quizzically but reassuringly. Also, oh, next time we get in a fight, give me a little bit of space. I want to try something out. I really hope we don't have to get into many fights. Well, it seems like an 
inevitable, inevitable, yeah, a it's thing that happens. Happen. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame that it comes to that so often. Well, should we be trying to get back to Bremen? Maybe catch some fish on the way? Make a little extra cash? Right, we did tell him we were going to catch some fish. Did we ever sell that pelt? Uh, you would have had time to do so. Uh, I would say... Given the roll that was made, you probably would have gotten maybe only three gold from that. Probably not a whole lot, unfortunately. It's better than nothing. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my dog snoring in the background. Yeah, just barely. <laughs> out so yeah let's uh let's see about doing that i mean have we come to any conclusions about the moidas um i think no. we have not i think no, this I think... is a bust here i don't know that we actually looked into the murders at all we just kind of showed up and got distracted nice. by a moose the the bush speaks out what murders? Yeah, some people were dying here and there. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't, don't think any bushes are going to get murdered. Oh, well, oh, well, thank goodness for that. <laughs> the one the one branch wipes away an imaginary sweat drop, even though it has no sweat. Has your, uh, your former uh, associate, did she... Uh happened to be murdering anybody lately well yeah she kind of like it, the 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 bush kind of like leans back in contemplation it has no face it's hard to gauge emotion but it's its body language is very expressive uh leading you to believe it's contemplating but it seems unsure of itself i mean she kills a lot of people well not her herself she see she she mostly relies on her uh, magic, her, her sub magically subbing stuff, uh, and her her awakened pets, her her uh, toys, as it were. So she's spineless and can't do anything herself. Uh, I would not say that. She can do it herself. She's just not. She just doesn't. She likes to conserve energy for if she needs to make a getaway. So, so yes, crazy. but no. I can't expect it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 what was that, Michael? I missed it. What'd you say? So she's lazy. I can respect it. Um, <laughs> it, it ponders this. I never thought about it that way. Maybe. Well, <laughs> busyness and cowardice go hand in hand. Well, I mean, are you saying, do you think Gravison did these murders? Because she's, she's been in Lonelywood for like weeks now. She hasn't gone out of that temple for a while. Right. I think that she's stuck in there until the end of the month. Oh, no. She can get out on the inside. She she has she has actually a way to get in and out on her own. See, she, oh. can, she can actually summon moonlight on a... Well, not on a whim. She can do it a couple times a day. She uses that to move the uh, move some light onto the, the dial... And that opens up the door first, so she can get in and out. But it's hard for anyone else to. I, I was super surprised that you guys got in. Well, shit. Well, if, if it ain't her, maybe it's something that she's awakened that's doing it. Uh, it could still be her indirectly. Was it an animal that did it? Well, well, we, don't, we don't know yet. They assumed it was a person because there was, like... Knifey and stuff, but an animal could probably figure that out if they used to. Yeah, well, well, knifey, I mean, not, not many beasts that use knives, so I would assume no. Not many beasts can talk either. Well, I mean, yeah, but you kind of need hands and it wiggles its branch. Like a raccoon. I mean, do they know what the murder weapon was? I mean, you said knifey, but... 
Do we know what the murder weapon was? You do, then? actually. You do actually know what the murder weapon was. It was like an icicle being used so right. that it melted away and didn't leave the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean... Go ahead. I mean, if it ain't Ravicent, maybe it's someone inspired by her. She was kind of swinging icicles around. Well, I mean, maybe. I, I know... I know her and a lot of druids like her can do that. But I definitely... It definitely wasn't her. Or at least I don't think it was her. She's been in there for a long time. She doesn't... And like I said, she usually doesn't do the killings herself. Wasn't there, like, a timeline that this was happening? Like, once every something? Uh, as far as you're aware of, I believe the information that was given to you, as you're kind of, like, trying to think about it, the timeline that these usually happen were some... be a few days after the new moon. The theory that the... that Hill, that Hill uh, told you, the uh, person who hired you, her theory was that it had something to do with the humanoid sacrifices that the towns were uh, committing, specifically to try and appease uh, Oral the Frost Maiden. Specifically, the main, the big cities of Targos, Bryn, Shander, and East Haven. That's what she told you. Interesting. <laughs> so we kind of did go off on a tangent here, but I think it was. A fair tangent, because we already knew that Ravisynth and other druids were potentially up to no good. Just and we killed a moose. A very dangerous moose that was killing people. Yeah. Didn't seem to want to stop. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, to be fair, that, was, that moose was pretty bloodthirsty. He, he scared me, like, a lot. Okay, well. Right, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he's really scary, right? Like, right. Like, he, did, like, he doesn't even clean the blood... Like, he didn't even clean the blood off when he killed people. He just, he just left it on, like, a sicko. That's what I'm saying. Right. He's not so scary anymore that he's dead. That's right, you did kill him. It's quite impressive. He is very strong. So, and therefore, you must be as well. There was only one of him and four of us. That is true. Numbers do sometimes help. That is that is true. So what do we do now? Anar kind of like, uh, or Sonar kind of look nods its head towards the bush, ah, ah, as if to agree. Like, what do we do now? I think we better at least get back to Bremen, and then from there go down to Tarkos. Like a and fish on the way back. Well, if uh, my understanding was that the road to Targos had some blockage, maybe we should just boat there. I suppose we could. I mean, the uh, the, the dwarf at the docks will be angry, but he kind of already was, so. <laughs> so as long as we return the vote eventually, I think it'll be okay. He never did give us a timeline. Alright. Okay, so in that case, you start heading back towards the docks, I assume. Yes. Okay, with your newly clad friend who is very well hidden in his uh, winter gear. Now, do you, I, I will say, does the uh, does the bush just kind of walk beside you, or are you keeping him in the... Uh, the no. He'll walk beside you. Okay. I mean, that's that's fine. It was getting it was cramped in there anyway. <laughs> and they just kind of, like, its roots just kind of like waddle alongside you, which, at this point, you get a couple of looks. Just people, like, just wandering by. Get a couple of whispers as they uh, as you walk past. There are, there aren't that many people. It is still very cold, so most people are inside. But the few who are outside are do do take notice of you. However, 
uh, those of you that do take notice, uh, specifically look at you, at, at the lot of you in your disguise. Um, <laughs> Skadak mutters that to himself. And they, each one that, that meets your gaze, Savage, gives a nod and a smile, as if, in a very knowing way. <laughs> Am I the head again? I thought we were going back into Bremen where I'm not the head. You can only be the head until we're out of town, and then we can switch around. Oh, okay. Alright, so, you make your way to the boat, and a couple people, like, kind of, like, walk up to you, and kind of just kind of give it, like, a nod. Thank you so much for all, for all you've done. Uh, we can finally go into the woods again and make a living. You'll help us survive. You get a kind of couple of people who... Really, sit, kind of sing your praises, and more, more they're willing to like. You see, you actually have someone who actually hands you a gold piece. It's not much, but it'll help you on your journey, hopefully. Who gets this gold coin? I said thank you, but who took it? I, uh, I, I got it. <laughs> All right, you kind of, you kind of slowly palm the gold from the hand with your with your glove and they kind of give you a, a smile and like a nod as they kind of run off and you make it to the docks eventually uh, that same old crusty man is sitting by the ducks and as soon as he sees you just gets up and walks away in, in a hurry I kind of snarl. Wait, what'd you say? What'd you say, uh, Savage? I kind of snarl at him. <laughs> that seems to make him run faster. Does he have Wait, icicles you. on him? Does he have what? Any icicles on him? No, no, he does not. Other than his beard, which is slightly frosted. Oh my god, it kills people with his beard. <laughs> the beard <laughs> murders. It was a slow burn. I, I giggled, and then it slowly really hit me what that was, and I just b bust a gut. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is it? I mean, if he is a suspicious person, should we not be doing something about that? The flip side yeah, is, why should I, we even I, care? He was just a little bit frightened of, of our friend Savage. Because of his initial greeting. You do remember that, Savage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, the boat is there. Your boat is there, still tied to the dock. Um, does not seem to be any worse for wear. The question is, how are you all going to fit on it? Uh, if we stay stacked, does that give our new guest room to Let ride me... upon that? I actually need to double check how much weight a rowboat can carry, and I will get back to you on that in a second. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Our cargo capacity point two tons. Point yeah, point two. Oh, what is what is a two thousand pounds? So point two of two thousand. So point two times two thousand. So Four hundred pounds. Yeah, that sounds about right. So how much how much do your individual characters weigh? Well, we're cobalt, uh, so I don't think it'd be that heavy. Good enough. Is with, with uh, keep in mind armor as well, uh, in that uh, right in that uh, calculation. Okay, I'll be defying Thomas the scale mail cost. I think Skaduck himself weighs twenty five pounds. Twenty five. <laughs> twenty eight pounds and twenty eight pounds of equipment. Okay, we, okay. In that sense, in that in that case, in that case, I don't think even with all you know, the equipment that you're carrying, you probably wouldn't get close to the threshold. In so never mind. So so don't don't worry about that. Then. Plus plus the mummy is lightweight. Yeah, the mummy's pretty sure. lightweight. <laughs> okay, so yes, if you're all stacked, there would be enough room for him to sit, and you would not sink. 
So, okay. Had to get that little calculation out of the way just to make sure. So, yes. You, you, get, you make your way into the boat. It's a bit of a weird balance. Just, just for comedy's sake, uh, Hawks. Roll me an acrobatics check. I was actually checking the weight on Hawks' stuff because he is in a full set of chain mail with a shield and battle axe. Right, so, but it, I think even with everyone, you barely break, like, like barely you know, acrobatics 200. Acrobatics or athletics? Uh, acrobatics. This is, like, keeping your balance in a in a boat. 15. Okay. Easily enough, you manage to make it just so we are... You put one in first, making sure you, the weight is distributed just so, so you don't tip the boat over with all your weight in one spot. And you manage to sit down just fine, leaving your new compatriots enough room to get in. And with that, you take off in the boat across the Mare Dwalden. I'm going to move the arrow. Oh, wait. So, uh, wrong 65. Thing. 65. So, okay. So, here's the thing for Hawks. Yeah. He's 35. Between him, his chainmail, shield, and battle axe, that's 100 pounds before you count anything else that's in his pack. Okay, so I'm going to say... I'm going to say it's a tight fit, then, with everyone together, but it's doable. Like it, Unless you added something egregious to it, it'll be fine. We don't have the moose head, do we? Uh, no, no, that was given to Nimzi as proof of your kill. Yeah, so long as, uh, as long as Hawks doesn't go large on us. Yes, as long as Hawks doesn't go large on you. You should be fine. Uh, as we're out on the lake. Ah, yes. I see. Did you want to go fishing then? Right, yes. But actually, if we're going to Targos first, we better not. I see. So you're going to wait uh, by going to Targos, then. Targos first. Yes. But if we do see the uh, lake monster, I want to tell him hello. And maybe to watch out. Alright. Make, a... <laughs> make a... Make a perception check, whoever wants to, then, if you're looking out for the uh, for the lake monster. Perception. Even with your bad eye, Savage, you managed to get a good look out. Uh, 15, 12. So Hawks is the only one who doesn't notice. You actually see, out on a very similarly sized boat to yours, you see Tally, actually, who is currently conversing with the creature about maybe like 100 feet away. It seems, it, you, just, you just hear, you, and you notice this, because you hear... Aha! Fascinating! Fascinating! And like loud claps, and then here, here. Let, let me switch to the head. <laughs> All right. It's it's a bit uncomfortable for the next few minutes as you rearrange yourselves around this this configuration to get into don't, the right don't, focus. Don't tip it. Hmm. All right. Now let's get over there, and and I want to talk to them. Alrighty, so you, you you row your way over there, and you do actually see... <laughs> Question, actually, now that I'm thinking of this, did, did the, uh... Did the, uh... Bleak monster ever see you in this disguise? No, but it might recognize my head. Yeah, well, just, just a point of order that I want to bring up. Um... Itali actually um, sees you first. Like, oh, hello, hello! They're like, oh, oh, um, uh, good sir, this is the individual I was telling you about. I mean, that, um, oh, of course you would have met them before, of course, because they, 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 um, they taught you the ways of Eldath. Um, I just gotta clap, clap their hands twice. Hello, how are you? And the serpent just kind of turns its head towards you and tilts it. 
seemingly not recognizing you. Right. Hello. How are you? Um, you may not recognize me. I was a little bit, um... Ah, ah, oh, oh. The, the, uh, the serpent kind of looks back towards you and then back towards Tally. I see. Um, I would like to let you know that we happened upon, uh, Ravison the other day, and she seemed nice enough. That is a uh, lie. She let you us... know it. Yes, it is. Well, uh, <laughs> she let us live, so that was nice enough for the time. I am surprised um, that you encountered her and lived. Right. So am I. But, that being said, she's not too happy with you, so you may want to be on the lookout. Ah. Um, well, I can... I can hide deep within the lake and... Well, no, she could follow me and send others after me. Mm. Oh, is this... Is the beast... Is, is the creature in some sort of trouble? Telly says. Right. There's a druid that awakened it and is trying to kill uh, all of Ten Towns with oh, awakened oh. creatures. And, uh, <laughs> and since since this pleasant creature uh, decided not to kill Ten Towns, uh, she's mad at it. I... Oh, oh, Tally's, Tally's face, there's, there's several emotions that go through their face at once. Surprise, shock. Can we you... just row on by, drop a bomb on Tally and keep going. <laughs> it's like, anyway, bye, and then you just, you just sail away. Um, I just, I just thought that this, do you have a name, honey? I, I did not pick one for myself. Name ideas, name ideas. Anybody have any name ideas? <clears throat> Jim. Jam. Champ. Champ. Wait, wait. Who, who? Wait, what did you... What was that? Um, you see Tally looks suddenly I'm, very confused. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking the names. Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to come up with a name. Oh, you're talking aloud. Oh, I see. Just right. Your voice sounded right. a bit different there. Yeah, I was I was muttering under my voice, under my, under my breath. Literally. Also, maybe coming down with a little cold. cold. Uh, well, you have to. But, well, you might have to. But, well, you, I'm sure if you go to the tavern, you'll get some nice soup. Cora can probably whip you up, uh, whip you something up. Not right. Uh, um, sorry, sorry about... I'm still I'm still processing what you just said to me. Destroying all of ten towns. Right. She said something about uh. The uh, Ariel, the Frost Maiden, and serving that goddess. I oh, mm. right. As you can see, it's it's a bit troublesome, but uh, I'm working on it a little bit here and there, trying to find an amenable response. Maybe Eldath and and the Frost Maiden can come to some sort of terms. I, um, hmm. Tally just kind of flabbergasted, just kind of muttering to themselves in Elvish, uh, which, funnily enough, you get it. <laughs> the figure, <laughs> Sonar, actually, like, tilts his head at that because he can understand her, or, he, or them. Oh, right, this is my friend Sonar. Um, I don't know. You probably haven't met him. Uh, oh. But he, he doesn't speak much in the way of common. He does speak Elvish, though. Oh, well, here, perhaps I can I can help you then. And Talia starts speaking in Elvish towards the individual. And Sonar responds in kind. Ah, Sanduin, Nada, Dotuel. And Talia responds in kind. Again, flabbergasted, your friend is speaking a rather archaic form of Elven. I. I understand them just fine, but they are speaking in a very strange way. Are they all right? Right. Um. Don't worry about that. 
Um, Sinar just gives is, a thumbs up. Is he up. all right? Does he have anything he wanted to tell us? Uh, no, he just said he he is following his newfound companions and liberators to the end, I think. She kind of like spins her eyes and looks up. I think that's what they he said. Um, uh, yes, you, you do hear uh, Hawks uh, whisper up uh, on a mentioned name. Then, Meepo. Uh, right. How about Van for the for your name, Miss Mister, uh, like creature. Van. Van. I like it. I from now on I will be known as Van. So so Van, um, I just wanted to warn you and make sure that you were, uh, aware of your circumstances, um. And, uh, Tally, I, I'm going to be going to Targos for a quick stop, and then I will return the boat once I'm done with, uh, the, my errand there. Uh, I know you are not on great terms with the, uh, owner of these two boats, but, <laughs> Certainly not. uh, if he asks about us, just tell him, uh, we'll be back with the fish. I, I, I'll, I'll be oh, back. Okay. Um, I'll I'll certainly I'll certainly tell tell him. Also, but if he doesn't ask, you don't have to say anything. Also, I think I moved the map up uh, <laughs> accidentally while they moved that back. Um, she uh, they uh, I keep saying she, but it really is they. Um, they they nod. Um, a bit flabbergasted. Still, again, you dropped a big, big lore bomb on them, and they're still not sure how to fully comprehend it um but they they agree uh, they're willing to at least relay the information well i'll i hope i'll see you soon then i hope so too eldath be with you and with you too van yes eldath be with us and also with us did i say that right it was close Good. It kind of you see one eye, one one slitted yellow eye blink, and then the other. Well, <laughs> goodbye, goodbye then. I I suppose, and Tally just kind of waves. You may want to stay, stay indoors and away from the wilds for the most part. I have a feeling the druids have an easier time getting to those who go too far from civilization. So I, so I've heard. Um, I'll have to keep that in mind. I'll have to poke. I might have to. You, you see them scribble something in their uh, notebook. I'll have to postpone that trip expedition to the Sea of Moving Ice. Okay. <clears throat> Very well. And I assume, assume at that point you do wish to uh, depart then? Right, yeah. And then we're going... <laughs> yeah, after that target. bit of a slightly awkward silence, you <laughs> you push off and head towards Targos proper. Who who wants to be the head in Targos? Do 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 we want to switch heads? Skanuck, you want to turn? Uh, yeah, alright. Alright, let's... I'll be the left hand then. Don't tip the boat. Now I'm doing my best to keep things stable. And, and thank you for that. Here, just uh, step down here, right on my shoulder. Oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Alright, so... This is, like, this is giant, like, seven-foot-tall beast of a person, and just like a tiny Skanuck head sticking out the top. Yep. Alright, so remind me of the order again. So Skanuck is on top, and who is where? I'm the left hand now, because I took Skanuck's spot. He's on the right hand. And of course, and then, Hox is the legs. As always. Hox as as always. Consistency. The foundation of our party. <laughs> literally. literally. Um, <laughs> um... Well, as you make your way towards 
Targos. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. You notice that uh, as you approach the town, the town is walled off. Uh, it is basically... It is has a massive wooden wall which encircles the town. Probably around maybe 20 feet tall. The wall itself extends out in the, into the lake. Where normally it would create a safe harbor for the town's boats. But as you can see, now as you're coming up on it, Oral's long winter has frozen the water in the harbor. And you can see some boats are trapped in the ice. And you can see some fishers uh, currently dragging their smaller vessels, their rowboats, out onto the ice. Uh, to where you are, to be able to get out into the lake proper. And you, at this point, you actually will have to abandon your boat uh, and walk the rest of the way into Targos. Can we at least drag the boat a little further into the ass? I'll say you can. Because they're dragging their boats with them, I'll say you have an opportunity to. It'll just take you a bit longer to get into Targos proper. We don't need to drag it all the way, I don't think. We can leave it out here a yes. bit. Just so it doesn't fall into the water. All right, so it doesn't drift away. All right. All right, everyone. We're gonna need to. We need to get up a little bit early for this. Yeah, you see a couple of fishers. You're just gonna leave your boat there. Is there a better place for it? Oh wait, no. Skunk is the one. What's that you say? <laughs> hey, you know a better place for it then? I at the dogs. We can tie it up. That way, no one will steal it. Eh, I guess it's good. Good, as good a thing as any. Alright, uh, just, just grab the root. He just kind of shakes, shakes his head and walks away. <sighs> Freaking newcomers, I swear. Maybe Sanar can help? Yes, Sanar, please help us. <laughs> ah, and he kind of nods. He will help you pull the boat. I can, let me <laughs> double check what his strength score is. I need to double check that. I mean, it'll be with everyone helping together. It should be more than enough. I just need to double check that for myself. Oh wow, he's actually um, he's actually decently strong. Somebody needs to learn Elvish. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, on death is. Uh... And death kind of overrides all of the problems of like muscle strength loss, I think. And being, yeah, being, being animated by uh, necromantic magic, I think, uh, even better than going to the gym on the regular. Which, you know, <laughs> as you had that thought, he actually, with his strength, he actually manages to pull the boat a bit faster than the rest of you. He's actually like con contributing a significant portion to this pulling. He just goes, ha ha. <laughs> he kind of looks towards you with a nod, with a with a small smirk, if you could. But with that, you all make your way into Targos proper. And this town, Targos, it is much larger than any of the other towns that you have been in so far. It is quite sizable. I would say it's almost um, three times the size of uh, Bremen. Uh, there are several docks uh, lining the shore, and you can see several of the large, uh, almost like what, what you appear to be uh, cog-like ships, are stuck in the ice. And you can see like several people like trying to like uh, break it out of the ice, but to no avail. So eventually, people just kind of give up. <coughs> yeah, you make your way inside the town. And as you are going in there, is there anything you... What do you do as you enter the town? Is there anything in particular that you're looking for? Uh, let's see. Are there any, like, um... Like, notice... Notice boards, or... You know, obviously, like, an inn would be one place where we could go for information, but is there anything else that might be an alternative route to learn more? Alternative routes. In what way would you say an alternative route? Do you mean? I mean, like um, to learn something. Like, 
Yeah, to learning something. So, like, you oh, know, is there a, a, different, a different way to gather yeah. information than just gotcha. going to an like a cluster of people gossiping? Is there, like, a, a notice board? Is there a... Hmm, go ahead and make prior... a perception check, then. Since you are the head. Nine. Oh. Uh, as far as... As far as people gathering outside, it is a big town... Uh, very big compared to Bremen and Lonelywood. But most people, like I've said before, especially in this cold, tend to stay inside for the most part, so you don't see any people kind of gathering around gossiping. Um, I will say you do at least uh, you do at least see a notice for a place called the Luskin Arms. Uh, from what the notice kind of says, it's the oldest public house in Ten Towns. Uh, it is what is the local inn and actually happens to be uh, the speaker's residence. He does not actually have... Uh, you actually would know this, uh, Skanuck, uh, being part of... Uh, growing up in Ten Towns. Uh, the speaker's name is Nerth uh, Maxeldanar, who happens to just kind of like... He doesn't have a place of his own. He actually... Um, he basically was kind of like a guy who came into town with a lot of money previously from pre previously from uh the, t the town of luskin which is a bit uh a bit to the south southwest of icewind dale he came here kind of like spread a, spread a bit of gold around and people took a liking to him as far as you know and gold so like he that. huh gold does that yeah yeah gold does that um and he kind of like took o just kind of took over the position of speaker uh, from the previous uh, speaker, who, from what you remember, didn't want the job, and he was, he was, I mean, he was well liked enough, but he was more than happy to hand over the position to Nerth. So yes, if you wanted to go somewhere, the Luskin Arms is probably a good bet. Okay. Well, um, all right, I'll see if I can't direct the team to the Luskin Arms. We're going on an adventure. <laughs> Oh, adventure. All right. So you make your way eventually. It does take it does take some time to navigate the town. Uh, but eventually, uh, let me see. Let me actually change music here for this. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, eventually, you do find the Luskin Arms. Much of the decor that you're looking at looks very, very old. At your best guess, and for what you know about the place, nearly 200 years old. Reflecting the town of Luskin as it was in the years before its decline, from what you've heard. Mm. Uh, as you make your way inside, the town is... Oh, sorry, the, uh, the inn itself is pretty busy. Uh, although it's the atmosphere as you walk in, if you're wowed by the outside, the inside is a bit of a mess. The inn has sturdy enough walls, but the floorboards are rotten, and drafts com are coming up from the, uh, from the like from the floor. As you're kind of like walking through, uh, hawks. You notice a rat scurry beneath your legs, and a and another one as well. As it squeaks past your legs, it goes into a corner and goes through a hole in the wall. I make an attack of opportunity to kill and eat the rat. <laughs> sure. Um, make a make just a an unarmed attack. The stack. <laughs> the stack is falling. Is he? Are we still in the stack at this point? Uh, you, you, you would be, yeah. Is this does the stack have a way for the, us to see out from the middle? Uh, there are. Well, not normally. Usually, you have um, Skinuck is your eyes. There, you, you could, you um, you can risk peeking out of the out of the coat, but if there are people around, you would have to try and hide that via deception right. checks from all of you to maintain your disguise. Um, with a 17, 
Uh, what's uh, so? What's your strength modifier? Plus two. Plus two. Plus. Okay. <laughs> is there any particular way that you want to grab the rat? As that is enough to kill it. I was thinking like flip my tail up and like as it's running past, use my tail to flick it off the ground up into my uh, maw and just crunch. Okay. With with that, you you hear Hawks, you you hear a small <coughs> and suddenly you, you feel uh, uh, Savage's tail whack out in front of you, and in a brilliant maneuver the rat does three car does three flips before it lands in Savage's mouth and he hear a sickening crunch as he chomps down. I don't think I'll be partaking in that meal. Yeah, from from the from the outside perspective, there's a bit of weird movement as the uh <laughs> as the middle of the uh trench coat wibble, wibble wiggles and wobbles for a moment. Um threatening the integrity of a snack. <laughs> Yeah, as you uh, as you make your way towards the bar, you see what you assume to be the proprietor, uh, a what appears to be a human man, very seeming very quiet, uh, balding as well, who just has the most depressing, sad look on his face. He just has a fist like just pressed into his chubby cheeks, and with one hand just just lazily wiping the counter, almost like he doesn't. Don't care at all. Welcome to the Luskin Arms. What can I get you? Uh, well, get any soup? You want soup? I mean, I guess I can get you that. Oh, wait a minute. I'll get it. And he just slowly meanders his way into the back. I can feel myself losing the will to live, just looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this some sort of psychic assault? What is going on? It's necrotic energy. I, I think he's just a little bit worn out from having so many nights. I wish we could have a little bit of sunlight, even though it does hurt my eyes. It's kind of nice to see it every once in a while. All right. Eventually, uh, he does come back out. Probably way, way too long for what he, what you, what you ordered. But he brings out some basic vegetable stew. Just kind of sits on the counter. Just kind of lays looks away. As soon as he gives it to you, he looks away, just starts slowly wiping the counter, not even paying attention to you. Um, is there anyone... I'm gonna look around, like, is there anyone more alive? <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead and make a perception check. Is this... Like, you know... I'm pre I'm prepared to, to like try and grill this person for information, but Skinnock would really rather not. Okay. <laughs> okay, seventeen. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Yes, actually, there is. Obviously, like honestly, it takes you a while because pretty much almost everyone in this building has the same depressive look that the bar that the uh, proprietor does and you're like and oh, you're oh my god this town is full of depressed people <laughs> but i don't want to talk to any of these people but then coming down from the stairs is a a person clad in full plate armor uh that is uh gilt like it is uh surrounded by heavy furs and a cloak a tiefling actually uh, the horn with jet black hair slicked back with oil and two horns that that uh, kind of curl back over the head in the same kind of fashion uh, with a golden earring very 
Very stir stone-faced expression, but otherwise a, a bit of a smirk. Kind of looks, ar looks around the room. Sees you. Kind of tilts his head. So we've got a smug bastard, and we've got a bunch of really, really miserable people. Okay. What fun. I think the liveliest person in this entire place would be Sanar. And he's dead. <laughs> yeah, not wrong. Maybe. We should just out of their miseries. Maybe. Does the does the like does the countertop wiping person is he still there? Yeah, he's there. He's just I mean he's not paying too much attention to you. He just seems to be lost in his own thoughts at the moment. Physically, emotionally there? Okay. And the soup is so, still there, untouched. I'm gonna try a bit. Let's see what we got. Alright. Alright. How do you get... How do you get... Oh, okay. Uh, right arm to get a... get the spoon. Spoon to the left. No, no, no. Not my left. That's, that's, that's right. right. I have the spoon. Spoon. All right, I come and eat. Scoop from the bowl, and I pour it on the floor, because it's garbage vegetable soup. All right, do you, do you I, will, I will say, do you, do you, do you do, you do that? Half. I do, but only the first scoop. All right. and I blow my fumbly cold hands. Hold on, let me see if he actually notices that, because there's a chance he might not, given his depressive state. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're left-handed here. You, you. I, you all right, Hawks? Well, the, the the one who notices that is is the uh, the armored individual, but the owner doesn't even look your direction. He is too lost in his own thoughts. The uh, you see the armored individual give like a scoff, <laughs> and actually starts walking over towards you. Oh, I'm gonna fight him! Come on, guys! No, no we can't fight, fight him. Dreary right him. Off the bat, he's just looking at us. No, scoffing at us like nothing. It seemed more like an interested chuckle to me. Which my so, hearty simpleton. Which, as as you say that, the individual kind of sits up next to you. Actually, takes a seat. Just kind of folds his arms and is like, "Hey, uh, uh, Owen, yeah, get me a drink, will you? And uh, one for my friend here too. Yeah, sure thing, I guess. Just, Do we just really want some drinks, <laughs> So, uh, nice to meet you. My name's, uh, I'm Scath. I, uh, I'm the leader of the town militia. And, uh, as leader of the town militia, I'm usually, uh, privy to, uh, people who wander in and out of Targos, and you're a new face. Yeah, just, uh, just rode in today from over in Lonelywood. You don't say. Huh. Interesting. You don't get many, uh... Don't get many new people wandering into, uh, Targos. Especially what with, uh... The lake being frozen, people can hardly get in and out. Must have come by a boat, then. Must have been, a. Uh, must have been a bit of a... Ah, just a thingy. Huh. Small thing. So, wait, where you from, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I've been kind of wandering ten towns for a little while. First time I've gone this far west. You don't say. Huh. Yeah, uh, let, me, let me ask you something. You, uh, you look like, uh, you're a big fella. You, uh, you consider yourself, uh, an adventuring type. You could say that. Are you pretty... my way around the crossbow? A crossbow? Alright. Now let me ask you something else. 
You had an adventurous to clearly you didn't know your way around a sword or a crossbow, as it were. How good are you uh, with something on the not-so-tardy side? Something a little less clean? Get your hands dirty work. Very. Artificer, artificing is not exactly uh, the, the tidiest of jobs. And, uh, you know, gotta find stuff, gotta find, find stuff to make stuff somewhere. Interesting, interesting. Well, you see, my, uh, employer, or well, I should say, uh, my boss, which, uh, you know, of course, is speaker, Mr. Nerf, he, um, he's, uh, oh, hang on, my dog is, hey, bu buddy, you okay, buddy? He's making weird noises. Alright, okay, I think he's fine. Um, sorry, that was, that was... Sorry, did you hear that? <laughs> thought I heard a dog making weird noise. I thought he was gonna barf in the bar. That's the last thing we need. Um. Anyway. So. Hmm. How to put this? Speaking of Earth is looking out for the vested interests of uh, all the people in Ten Town, specifically in Targos. But it's come to his attention that uh, our rival town of. Uh, Tamerlane has been having some unfortunate problems with its mine. A group of resident kobolds have taken uh, have taken up root in their mine and have uh, kind of chased uh, chased the miners out. Now, Ma, Ma now Miss Speaker Nerf. <laughs> now Speaker Nerf, he is a. Uh, Un he is uh, not pleased with the speaker of Termalane's uh, uh, expediency of dealing with this problem. And I get the feeling that the next time an election comes up, speaker, the speaker there is not going to be uh, so fondly looked upon. Now, of course, people still like the speaker, but my employer is... Uh, might be willing to pay some extra money if you can make it so the problem is not solved. Kobolds do do like to burrow into things and root yeah. themselves so they're hard to get rid of. It might be doable. Yeah, but like... actually, I I came into I came to town because I heard news of some um, well killings that have been happening. Oh, yeah. He kind of gets a sour look on his face, kind of like rolls his eyes. Unfortunate business, that, but it's probably nothing to worry about, you know. People people die all the time, especially out in these, uh, this part of the world, in the Dale. You know, it's... But if, uh... Yeah, there have been killings recently. But not only here in Bryn Shander and East Haven, too. It's not just here. Oh, no, no, I, I just... I know, I heard it I heard it's been going around a bit. Yeah, but uh I'm sure you've heard sure you've heard of it. It's a terrible thing that. Blades of horse plunge right into the heart. Right nasty business that. I think I I think a guy like me might be interested in putting a stop to, you know. You don't say. Well, I can tell you personally that more men and I are superb in finding out all the ins and outs of any sort of activity going on in Tarkos, save for maybe the exception of that one murder. I think we got it covered, honestly. But, if you're willing to help, I'm sure Speaker Nerf would be right pleased to have some assistance. Of course, you know, no one really knows anything about who might have done these crimes, so... Unless you have any leads, I wish you luck. Did we have any leads, Evan? Uh, you did have a couple. You know that there were... Hello, how the couple theories of either it was Frost Druids who were able to create blades made out of ice. It seemed... seemed logical, but then, of course, druids don't normally frequent the towns themselves inside. And her other theory 
was that a possible connection to a trading company called Torgs and a man named Sefik Keltro, which she thought that was flimsy at best, but the only reason she thinks it was this man is because he might have some connection to the Frost Maiden. As, by her description, the man had no form of winter gear on, instead just walked around in the Arctic cold with no more than a shirt or shirt jacket, rolled up sleeves, as if the cold never even bothered him. In addition, yeah. the Torg's training, training company happened to be in town when these murders took place. Hmm. Speaking, of, speaking of leads, I guess, there's that one, um, I heard a weird, weird story about that Torb's trade company. Apparently some guy was wandering around half naked in the, in the snow. Torg's. Yeah, I know about Torg's. What you, what you want to know? Kinda I gives, just, kind of gives you a look. I just heard that someone involved them was, um, you know, just kind of wandered around in the open without any gear on. Just shirt and pants. And, you know, that's not, that in itself ain't so weird, but apparently he wasn't freezing or anything. Mm. Yeah, you know, hmm. it's familiar, you know, but, you know, man, I just can't place my finger on it. I know I've heard it before. And as he's kind of like making this dramatic show of like, pretending not to know, like putting like an arm on his head as if in deep thought, his other hand comes down on the counter and his thumb and his uh, pointer finger start rubbing themselves together. But you, Skanuck, hmm. make an insight check with advantage. The lack of subtlety is palpable. Twelve. And yet... <laughs> oh, 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 hang on. I, I, I moved the, um... I, I gotta look at the rolls, because I moved the, um... The screen off to the jukebox when I didn't need to. There we go. I wonder how long that's been. Uh, don't think about it, Devin. Twelve. He's clearly trying to ask for money in compensation for information. Snap his fingers. Not yet. Soon, but not yet. Um, yeah, Snuck is gonna, like, pass a single gold coin down to Mipho and say, Oh, oh no, I seem to have dropped a, a coin with my left hand on the table. You see, as you kind of slip a... Make a slate of hand check, uh, Meepo. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a weird uh, weird thing going from like inside the coat to out from the sleeve. With with help. Also, so with advantage. Don't even need it. I don't, I don't need it, but still, still good. Um, <laughs> Just look at something. He doesn't notice as the coin drops out from the sleeve. This kind of looks towards you, look towards the single gold coin, looks towards you. Really? That's what I got, man. <laughs> Make a deception check. No, <laughs> <laughs> Stone face. Let's see. Deception. Ooh, this is not going to be good. 17. Oh, alright. He kind of like looks at you, gives a sigh. <sighs> Damn, you really are in need of work. He can just kind of slowly palms the coin, kind of grumbling to himself. All right. What I can tell you is that Torg's trading company happens to be in town tonight. Huh. Well, that is interesting. Yeah. Should be open for a few more hours. Then they'll probably get a room tonight. Yeah. Interesting. Do you know where they're set up? Uh, I think they set up uh, somewhere to the, somewhere outside of town, I believe, or close to the close to the wall, I believe. Hoping to catch people who go in and out of the city, which isn't very much, but they get what they can. Uh, that is a very interesting point. Well, um. Thank you for the drink. Oh, wait, did the drink actually arrive? Yeah, at this point, it's t the whole time you've had this conversation, you've been like, huh, where's that drink? And then this uh, so, so named Owen slowly shuffles in, just places them on the counter. 
just looks just looks at who you who this mercenary who seems to be named Scath. There you go. Shall I bring compliments to Mr. Neff? Oh, oh, sure thing, Owen, sure thing. It gets kind of like, you see, um, let me see if you can hide this. Oh, uh, yeah, you just see, uh, an exchange of coins, just like put a gold coin on the counter, and clearly too much for the drink, and, uh, the uh, proprietor takes it, palms it, gives, uh, Scat a nod, and goes back to his depressive vegetative state of looking out at nothing. Ah, uh, dumb, I know, and he's just, uh, bit a bit of a sour atmosphere here with, with uh, everything going on, you know, killings, eternal winter, the whole dock being frozen, our main source of income drying up, you know, it's no big deal, it's fine, he says with oozing amounts of sarcasm. Yeah, definitely, uh, Definitely a uh, hell of a time we're in. Oh yeah, heck of a time indeed. Ah, but the rock town for people like us to make a killing, hey? And he just kind of elbows you. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Well, I'll see you around. Kind of gives you a wink. Just kind of walks Thanks out the for... door. Thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Just kind of waves you off as you. Just kind of like, look, but without even looking behind him, just gives a wave with one hand. So, um, was the drink, like, messed with? <laughs> Make an investigation check. Or, uh, yeah, 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 investigation. Um, as far as you can tell, it just looks like a drink. Okay. Eh, fuck it. Only one out of four going down ain't so bad. All right, left hand, <laughs> in case drink votes. All right, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw. Okay, Skanuck, you can do this. You have you have proficiency in con save. Thirteen. Okay, it's your first drink, so that's more than enough. Um, you you drink it down, you get a slight buzz, but you are fine. You're feeling good. Excellent. All right. So, where do you head off to now? Do you decide to stay where you are, or uh, do you want to converse with your party to figure out your next move? Our next move would be to go into a dark alley, grab that guy, and rat him down. So violent. Jeez. I don't think that that is the best way to make friends in town. No, but it's obviously a great way to make a quote-unquote killing. Right. How much do you need to be for him to scream, I'm the murderer? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't mention this before. Um, my bad for not uh, role playing into it. He did notice uh, the awakened bush, as well as uh, the new your friend, but didn't pay them any mind. More focusing on you and your what you did. Well, that's good enough. You uh, you suspect them that strongly, eh? A holier than thou, bigger humanoid. Yeah, I expect him above all the other ones we've met. Let's, uh, let's make sure we're like, you know, a little bit tucked away before having this conversation, I guess. It'd be a good thing to do. But yeah, I didn't I didn't get the vibe that he was uh, holier now so much as a uh, bit bit dirty, bit corrupt. That's just You can make an insight check if you want yeah. after the fact, as you're kinda of like reviewing his character. Oh my God. Wow! I know this man. <laughs> yeah, Savage. Because you couldn't see his face, you only heard that. You only heard what you wanted to hear. Um. Uh, Hawks, you get the sense that um, definitely seemed like just a more corrupt kind of type for sure. Um, Meepo, pretty much the same as Hawks. Uh, Skinuck. Hmm. Well, with with the, I'll say guy. with the natural twenty. I'm going to have you roll a history check as well, in addition to that. Alright, come back. You can do it. Ah, oh, no, you can't. Mm. Considering Skanuck's backstory, it's not too hard to believe there is some form of corruption 
in Tarkos. You've heard of shady dealings before. And while you know of Speaker Nerth, he had a lot of gold. You know, it came in pretty... Like, pretty pretty cleanly in terms of, like, rising to power in Targos. You've heard some not-so-good things about him. Specifically of... You've heard rumors of dealings with the Zentarum. Oh, crap. Yeah, and the Natural 20 is what gave you, kind of gave you that, that kind of, like, gleaned insight of, like, knowledge about him. And, of course, you get the sense that he does definitely not a holier-than-thou type. Just a... Just a skeevy mercenary type who just will do anything for gold and just in it for the money type. Shady as anything. Mm. Well, if he's willing to do anything for money, then uh, I guess we can't really rule him out as the... Uh, it seems to me like he might have been involved somehow. He was trying to steer us away from it. Perhaps, maybe not him, but his organization. I wouldn't be surprised if he were, you know, involved locally, but a guy like him said he was the captain of the guard, right? Uh, captain of the town militia. There's not, like, a, an organized, like, government. Like, it's very loosely based. So, like, it's basically just a very fancy militia. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that a guy like him could be going to a bunch of different towns without calling attention to himself. I think it's likely he has a group of people that might be doing it. If if it is happening in several towns, tell you what, for the sake of for the sake of uh, our lead, our, our previous lead, how about we go take a look at this trading company and then maybe camp out near them for the night and see if we can't see if we can't see some, and then after that we'll investigate this guy. Sounds fun to me. Okay. So in that case, I assume you guys are heading towards uh, where you assume these people to be. I don't, I don't know about you, but that, uh, that guy that doesn't need coat, a coat to survive out in this winter sounds a lot more like he's got ice powers than a teeth one. Or some fancy boots. They could be very fancy boots. My voice is slipping into like southern for some reason. <laughs> I can feel it happening with her It's the uh the <laughs> no, it's it's me. Okay. So let's see here. Alright, so you make your way towards the edge of town. And easily enough, you do actually find this caravan. At a distance, it seems like this caravan is consists of three heavily laden dog sleds, each one pulled by six friendly looking sled dogs. One sled seems to carry what you assume to be provisions and supplies. It flies a flag bearing the uh, the company's. Uh... Oh, sorry, my dog is just is trying very desperately to get into my lap. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Sorry. Snorkel life. Yeah, snorf, snorfle, snorfle. Oh! Oh, oh, you actually want to get in my lap. Oh, okay. Hang on. <laughs> it is dog time. Apparently it is dog time. You are not paying enough attention to your dog. Appar apparently I'm not. He's also very loud. I apologize. You're going to get some snorfling dog noises. I apologize in advance. Uh, as I resume with my description, uh, it flies the uh, the uh, caravan flies a flag bearing the uh, the company's emblem, a gold wolf's paw on a black field. The other two sleds that you can see look like they transport goods for sale that include cut wood, flint and tinder, flasks of whale oil, blankets, furs, rations, bottles of wine, lots of different things. Definitely seems like it's an outdoor shop. There's like a it seems like there's a stall. It's like a very uh, quick, that's like a stall that's like one of those ones that are like easily collapsible. Uh, currently, you can see that there seems to be uh, four, but four individuals, uh, very surly looking uh, human humans. They're just kind of like 
wandering around ca like carrying stuff from like thing to from like a uh, sled to sled. Um, you notice that one of the uh, like the third sled carries what appears to be a very large sack. Uh, it seems to be covered up with a blanket, uh, partially. Um, you see, as well, behind the stall, there appears to be a dwarven woman with, like, a blondish hair, uh, kind of, like, pale skin, blue eyes, who just kind of, like, um, she kind of, like, every now and again, she, like, you can see her face because she lifts her uh, face mask off to deal with people as they come as they come in and trade. Uh, very, very sour look on her face. Like, she has, like, a continual face that just looks like she just drank sour milk. Uh, very, very <laughs> not a very good, uh, kind individual on first glance. Uh, in addition, you also see an individual who is flanking her side. A stoic, middle-aged man, slick-backed hair with white streaks along the side, tan skin, and a generally pleasant expression. As opposed to all his compatriots, he is not wearing any form of winter clothing. True to his description, you was... You was <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to... Ow. Your claws. I need to clip your nails, bud. He tried to maneuver himself, but instead dug his nails into my leg. Ow. Yes, perfectly by accident, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> but uh, you see this individual who is just kind of like eyeing around, just kind of like, from from what you heard from Hilm, uh, uh, Sephic Kaltra was Torg's uh, bodyguard, from what you know. Um, so currently he's just looking around, eyeing, seeing if anyone's going to start any trouble, with a big smile on his face. Seems to be very well, uh, very well-mannered and just a generally happy individual, as you can tell. Can I, can I roll an insight check on him? Sure. Just like a, like a, like a once over, like, is this, is this man secretly a serial killer? Well, you won't know for certain if he's a serial, kill serial <laughs> killer or not. However, the soft 20 does give you a few things. True to form, he does not seem to be affected by the cold at all. If you know that for a fact, he is moving around, like, as opposed to, like, someone who would be, like, afflicted with cold, um, they would, like, be able to move a bit slower than normal. He is moving at a perfectly normal pace compared to all of his compatriots. A lot faster. Like even even though he's like not wearing any winter furs that would hinder his movement, <coughs> he's still moving at a very brisk, cheerful pace. This makes sense that you would know this as well, Skanuck. Um He has a slight air to him that is similar to your own in a way, which you might remember. Uh, yeah. In addition. You know that the smiling face that he wears, the eyes don't meet, meet don't uh, don't match. <laughs> the eyes that he gives as he's eyeing is the eyes of someone who's hmm. How to describe? There's a bit of a hunger to them. It's definitely a bit ominous, yeah. Got a sort of sort of hungry rat look to him. Oh, please don't mention rats. <laughs> as, su just... as suddenly, uh, uh, coming from Savage. I'm just, I'm just telling you, like I see it, you know? It's, that's the look a rat gives you right before it pulls a knife. Um, well, <laughs> uh, does he have fancy boots on? Um, no, actually. He just kind of has, like, normal boots. Like, here's the... Actually, now that, I, now that, now that you mention it, He's he's wearing open-toed shoes of all things. Oh, he's clearly just like a then. Okay. Even with <clears throat> with socks, even. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Murderer! I really <laughs> <British>. Murderer. <laughs> Kill him. 
Wow, you guys are a little extra. <laughs> Where's calm emotions? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm definitely getting like a bit of a suspicious vibe from him. I guess it'd be good. Like a sort of angrier than he looks vibe. Yeah, not even um, necessarily angrier, but just. Just there's a bit meaner. of. Yeah. Mm, not even meaner. There's like. There's like a subtle. Hmm. You know what? Even though, like, you can't tell, like, if he's, like, a serial killer, there's a bit of, like, a psychopathic, like, look to the eye. Like, there's, right, like... Like, he's not really not really engaging with people he's looking at or talking yes, to. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I think... Do you guys think we should, like, uh, talk to him, or... Well, not, not him, obviously, but, like, you know, in general, talk to the lady and maybe buy some stuff. Do some fishing. Do we have any money to buy stuff? I have two gold. Right, I have twenty-six silver. All right. All right. Did, did did we split up that gold we got earlier? I don't think I added that. I, uh, yeah, you should. Uh, as well, talk. I'll be right back. Go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. How much? How much gold did we get earlier? I. I... I... Two and a half gold. Two and a half. And then we got another four for something. Okay. So I think I put I think I put it down as three and a half when I got around two of mine. Okay. So then I've got two gold and thirty one silver. Yeah. The four was from the pelt. Right, we got right, we got three for the pelt and one from a guy just handing it to us. Indeed. Yeah. It means yeah. I'm at five gold. 25 silver, and 106 pla uh, copper. Nice. I've got 3 gold, 5 silver, and 6 copper. Hmm. Yeah. Alright, so we've got some gold. Say we at least window shop. Um. Yeah. So we're walking up. I want to like try and get close to that uh, covered sack thing and see if it's like, like if there's a smell or something. How close do you want to get? Um. Within ten feet. Okay. As you attempt Not to get, uh, as you attempt to get uh, close to it, like within thirty feet, you hear a voice. Hey there, friend. Mind I ask uh, where are you heading towards? As the individual who you believe to be Sephic Caltro mm -hmm. looks in your direction with a smile on his face. Yeah, just uh, you know, carousing. I see. Well, the what's wares your, are over here, my friend. Those are those are for my crew, or rather, Fair Torga's enough. crew. Fair enough. Why don't you step away from that, my friend? No harm, no Good. foul. Nothing wrong with a little curiosity. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, like direct, direct the pile towards. Towards the thing, um, yeah. which at so, this point uh, now his employer has uh, gotten your attention. So you're looking to buy something, or you're not? Well, I was uh, thinking about getting some rations if you had any. Rations, eh? Yeah. Good traveling stock if you got any. Boys, how many rations we got? Kind of look through the inventory. Double check how much, how much uh, rations actually cost. Really quickly. It kind of, as they were kind of like ruffling through all their stuff. Uh, where 
is it? It's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. There we go. We've got about 10 days worth of rations for sale. It's five silver pieces per, per ration unit. Mm. I'll, I'll give ten silver for two rations. I got I got five for one. Anyone else want one? Yeah, I'll pass off a uh, good pass five good. silver. Yeah, I'll pass up five silver for another one. All right, five silver. All right. So I think that was. Four, unless Savage wanted one? No, four. I don't need Alright. Four rush. Alright. So you go ahead and purchase the amount, and Torga claps her hands, and her men go ahead and bring that to you. Back it up for you. Give it to you. Pleasure mm -hmm. doing business. Anything else you're looking for while you're here? Eh, I don't think so, thanks. Uh, how are you? We're only here for the day. After we after we tuck in for the night, we're gonna leave out fresh in the morning. Yeah. And not an hour later, right, boys? And she like her eyes like kind of glare daggers at the four other humans. Uh, y y yes, mom. Yes, mom. Yes, mom. Because they both kind of scurry to their back to their business. <laughs> Where are you heading next, if you don't mind me asking? The eyes kind of squint at you. Don't know yet. Might be Bremen, might be Brinchander. Haven't decided yet. Fair enough. I'll see, I'll see if I see you then. Have a good one. Bye. Okay. She says that she kind of like looks away. Have a nice day now. The, the, uh... <laughs> The very cozy man just kind of like waves to you with a smile, that same smile, that fake smile on his face towards you. Okay. Direct the stack away. One, one second. So unprofessional. I right, continue. I'm back. I know it's professional. Right, because you're being paid for this. <laughs> I'm not, but you know. Yeah. Until we until we get paid, we're all amateurs. Right. I know, but <laughs> it's fine. It's just funny. And even then, we'd be novices. This is true. Well, it's it's, it's not even that. It's mostly just like. When I'm interrupted, I, I, I lose the flow of it. And I have right. to like get back into the headspace. Which of course, you know, it's not it's not like it's not my dog's fault. Like he's you know, he just wants he he needs attention, he needs love. He needs, he needs to have attention. Plus he needed to go outside too, so I I couldn't just let him, you know, go to the bathroom on the floor, so I had to take care of that. Yep. Yeah. As the Caravan takes care of their dogs. Indeed, yeah. It, there had to be Back a shuffled away. Exactly, exactly. There, there you go. You already done my job for me. <laughs> um, so, what do, what do you what do you guys do now? I'm suggesting we um, we walk down the road away from Tarkos for like 20 minutes, and then like slip away into the into the forest to make camp, and then see if we can't wake up have after a long rest and sneak up on them in the night before they leave. I like this plan. Hmm. So you're wanting to, so you're wanting to take an early long rest in order to get the drop on them. Yeah. Right. Hmm. They said they were going to be up for another few hours and we've we've had our moose fight today. Yes. This would give me a chance to put my runes on as well. And it would give me a chance to reset some of my things that reset at long rest. <laughs> That's lots. Emboldening right. bond. So, 
In that case, you're wandering away from the town, then. Now, near Targos, there aren't really many woods. However, there are some... Uh, there are, I'd say there are, there are big enough snowdrifts uh, out near the road towards Bremen. You know, given what you know, given what was said and how the road was blocked, you could probably hide behind a few snowdrifts. Oh, I see. Okay. Ten foot tall snowdrift. Yeah, that one will work. <laughs> You're just like, not that one, not that one, that one. It's nice real estate. It's uh, free real estate. You yes. even burrow into it and do the cobalt thing. Set up a little cave. Free real estate. Yeah. Alright, so, in that case... Speaking of kobolds, during the time that we're taking a long rest, Meepo's going to suggest that we go and make friends with the kobolds in that mine, eventually. I'm not opposed to it. You see Sinar, who has been kind of silent this whole time, just kind of nods, ah. He kind of claps his hands together. Yeah, so I, I, so this is, and the, the bush suddenly speaks up as well. And yeah, this is all new to me, so I didn't know what to say, so I just kind of kept quiet the whole time. Right, I'm not sure a talking bush is something a lot of people see. Yeah, yeah, no, so, I, I was getting a couple of looks, so uh, I was trying to like stay like you know nonchalant and like be quiet, you know. Right, nonchalant's probably the best way to go. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. So, I mean, you're not going to make me fight, are you? Uh, are you going to get a fight? <laughs> no. I make berries. Yeah, that's... that's all I do. Probably not, unless we're all going to die. Oh, th oh but... thanks goodness. Uh, uh, what, what god do you... Oh, sorry. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Protect yourself if it's necessary. Yeah. I was just going to say, praise whatever god you worship. What is it? What is oh, that god? Oh, Elda. Praise Elda, thank goodness. God is so peace. And so there was another. Well I'm not I'm not actually converting, I'm just I just needed a god to to use use Praise. their name in vain to never mind. It, it's fine. Existence is still a mystery to me. One day it was a bush and now I can talk. You know, life. Eh. I wish I could tell you it got less confusing. It 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 get it it doesn't get less confusing over time. It can parts of it. Ah, the the branches droop. Here, before we do our long rest, let me help you here. Eh. All right. Oh, that, that's that's kind of nice, actually. Oh, oh, man, that's that's pretty chill. I'm a fan. <laughs> the, the branches just kind of droop a little bit, and as it kind of leans back into the snowdrift, as a as a mummified hand just just pats the bush on the head. Ah, Sanduin. Yeah, what, whatever you say, buddy. Meepo is out here with the mind-altering spells and... <laughs> Converting <laughs> people left and right. I love it. Alright. So. That was it. It's 11.51. I'm going to say you guys will take this long rest here. And then next session, you can start your plan... To ambush Torga's trading company. Oh, this, is power. this long rest gives me the opportunity to uh, actually put my um, put my uh, uh, what you call it onto my runes. Excellent. Which is nice and fun. Ah, I hope I hope that session was fun for you guys. I, I apologize if I was a little bit uh, I wasn't quite quite uh, there for it all the way. No, I, 
pets are as pets are, you know? That's how pets it, be. I've had multiple cats coming to visit me and try to uh, get my attention while this has been happening. So, yes, um, yes, the, the pets are as pets are. Yeah, indeed. You know, you know cat they, they need their time. Gotta have those cattos, you know? Indeed. Live in that cattle light. Yeah, at the very least, you leveled up and next session, which will be very interesting if you if you initiate combat, because you get to, to play with all your new fun toys. Yeah. Do we do ourselves a bunch? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for Squirrel Bolt. I, I am as well. I'm excited. And you have a mummy friend. And a, a bush friend. Do you have you have friends? Friends. You got a posse. And we're gonna have a cannon friend, and eventually we're gonna have a homunculus friend. Oh, Lots no. of friends. Oh no. The friend brigade. See, if you eventually, if you do actually befriend these, uh, if you befriend the bush for real, there's a possibility of making them a sidekick, but you have to treat them nicely. So far, that's uh, Meepo's plan. Yeah, so far. We'll, we'll see how it turns out, roleplay-wise. But the mommy doesn't have a chance of being a sidekick? No, because their their CR is too high. <laughs> right, got it. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. He's actually probably stronger than us as a party. Probably. Oh, maybe. Luckily, he's no. a... Stronger nice. than you as a party? Mm -hmm. I can't not as say. a party. I could probably take him down if we had to. Especially since I have cleric -y stuff. Yeah, probably. It didn't suck, though. I definitely, the stats definitely don't suck. Mummies are, mummies are fun. <laughs> we, could, we might be able to take him, but it would definitely be a sucky fight for us. <laughs> Getting beaten, beaten half to death by a mummy. Mummies are oh. fun. They have some fun abilities. <laughs> Which you, you did, which you might see. We did release him. I still want to see if we can uh, potentially get that uh, Banshee. Ah, yes. Yes, yes. We can figure out what's going on with her eventually, but that will require us to go back there. And... Right, we could also get the mirror eventually. If somehow we were able to get a bag of holding, then that would be something we'd be able to get and use oh easily. oh my god what i get enlarged reduce at this level i oh. told you mike i told yeah. you <laughs> so you balls will be a huge bald do you want to be swollest balls do you want to actually lariat a giant <laughs> bazar agrees i if we yeah, see a giant that is, it is going that back. i was hoping that someone would take um, because... All right, be thinking of how to flavor that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you give him like the steroids. Like this one's a new. This one's a new flavor. Here you go. Chunk insert. Right. <laughs> it's just I a don't know what a great is. I just made this flavor up. <laughs> he just like takes a couple beakers out of his pocket and mixes them together. It's like, all right, here you go. Let's see what it does. That's the one we take. Can you feel it? The suspense? <laughs> so, you're going to have to scale my token up a few sizes. Yeah, I will. That'll be a blast. Oh, there's a dragon. Tackle it! <laughs> Get him! <laughs> I'm going to ride it. <laughs> We yeah. have a dragon. We have we have a hawk. <laughs> we have a hawk. All we need to do is figure out a way to get hawk's wings, and he can be a dragon. Yeah. I guess yeah. wings and fire breath. You just take fourteen levels of sorcerer, and then it's, it's bam. It's fine. Wings. It's fine. You just you just make a kite, and that way you <laughs> no, no it True. doesn't work. Kite. Like a hang glider, almost like wings. No hang glider, maybe. Or we could get that uh, new UA spell. What is that one? Or, or eventually, create a magic item. 
Is there like, uh, is there not a uh, infused item that's like winged boots or something? No, there's. Yes, yes, there are. Yes, there is. Okay, but what level is that? I'm curious now. Seventh level spell draconic transformation. That's way too high level. Uh, let's see, winged boots is a tenth level artificer. Ah, uh, okay, so not for a while, but, but, eventually. If you want to get boots of elven kind? That's just sixth level. Yeah, I think that's advantage Which on stealth really checks. Good. I think. Uh, yeah, no sound regardless of surface and advantage on self checks. Which mm -hmm. actually quite good for Stuck because he's got fail now. It could be good. Let's see. Okay, so Mark Reduce is going to be the first second level spell. And then maybe. I'm hoping we can scrounge up some uh, plate for uh, Tox at some point. That's true. Yeah, That's true, Caleb. Nice. There is the, there is the, uh, the Dragon Wings feet for. Uh... There's, I think there's a there's a kobold racial feat that lets you grow wings. That's like not technically. It's like it's like official. Unarthic yeah, it's kind. in Bolder's guide. There's the dragon wings uh, or the winged kobold. So yeah, birds. But I don't think any. I don't know that there's any presented method for you becoming. Well, mm, there's like a f official unofficial feat in. D and D Beyond. Hold on, I I will find this. Hang on. Is that the guide? It's no, it's not in Xanathar's guide for to be. Thinking of is specifically for Dragonborn. Right. And but they're trying to think of one that's not not the one that I brought up, but one for Kobolds. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm so sure there's like a official unofficial. Officially unofficial, like it's like one that didn't racial feat that didn't make it into uh, Xanathar's guide as a racial feat. Oh, so, UA one. The rules for turtles were like that for a while until they got actually published in um, what should we call it? Um, Wild Tomb of Annihilation. Were they published in Tomb? Uh, no. I don't think they were published in Tomb. They were published in Wild Mount. I know for oh, a while right. that D and D Beyond had the. Uh, that set of rules available as kind of like an official unofficial it's, it was like a extra buy like the um charity one because mm. i know there's rules for like lokatha playing as a lokatha isn't that yeah, it's the same same, same deal yeah wild mount is still kind of official unofficial because it's a separate setting that isn't wizard specific it's teamed up with wizards to do it but not like yeah, here we go it's, it's by bad eye which is the un, it's like official homebrew as it were in D and i'm gonna put that in i'm gonna put in D and D memes because it is all meme yeah it's just a homebrew feat well i mean it's homebrew in the sense that like it's made by someone who works at wizards of the coast oh somebody who works there made it yes it's, that's what I've been trying Got to it. say, or trying to get across. By I, I, I'm, I'm very bad at wording things. It's on the list of homebrew feats, though. Yes, I mean it is technically homebrew. It's not official in the official sense, but it is made by a, an official by a service. So it's like it's balanced, probably. I don't necessarily think, though, that I'm going to try to. Oh, excuse me. Try to get Hox to fly. I think Hox's priority is being big and beefy and smashing things. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, oh, I, I just realized the stream is still going. We should probably end it. I should probably actually end the stream here. Everybody gets to hear our little after game chat or shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's that's fair. That's fair. View of what it's like behind the screen. Ah, behind the screen. Ah. All right. Well. If you've been watching, and if you're watching this right now, thank you so much for tuning in to our shenanigans, myself and my players especially. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day or night. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. See you next week. See you next week.